dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and we are back Last time, two weeks ago, so we'll do a little bit of a refresher here. Um, the party returned from their voyage to salvage some treasure from a derelict ship known as the Emperor of the Waves, and were able to gather their um, promised reward, an immense one. After doing so, however, they ran into a small child who told them of something going wrong with his friend, Caleb the Crab. Uh, following they were the um, trail that the child set them upon, they went out to Crabber's Cove, which is an abandoned small little area just outside of town, outside of the town of Saltmarsh, completely covered in crabs, as is its namesake. Um, they then found the shack where Caleb was purported to live and indeed found a talking crab just sitting in the middle of a shack and um well one thing led to another and it turns out it was not so much of crab as a trapped vampire who required someone pure of heart to carry him from the cellar beneath the shack in order to be released from an ancient curse well, with the help of some failed wisdom saves, the party did just that. And upon uh, realizing that they had released this vampire named Jolek upon the world, uh, some ran for help, some ran to watch whatever it was that Jolek was going to do, as he had promised the party that he knew some valuable information, some information about their enemies, some information that they should be um, highly interested in if they were interested in rooting out the evil and corruption in Salt Marsh. He promised them the first link that night, and just as some of the party were going for help, a guard came around, or a mercenary rather, stumbled from around, from an alleyway near the uh, Solmore estate, the estate of one of the most high-ranking councilmen. His neck seemed to be bleeding profusely and he was babbling, um, seeming to be out of his mind speaking about, uh, babbling about, you idiot, the first rule of the Black Network, do not put your writings, or put your orders in writing. And uh, repeated that, before falling dead and not just falling dead but being struck by a large piece of um chimney which seems to have been pushed off the top of the Solmore estate it was then that you heard the words and i believe um elena you had those written down yes i did what did he what was then whispered to the present party members link number one and that is where everything ended. So, we've got a bit of an interesting situation to start off here. Um, as we have a divided party. Watching this, I believe, is who? Who is at the Solmore Estate. So we have Nether and Serene and... Well. Pardon? Nene as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. So Nether, Inaris, Melvin, and Serayan are all there having just watched this happen. Now, Talise, some of your party ran to the temple to go warn the um, priest, Welgar, Brian Hand, or at least ask him for his guidance in this matter. Um, that would have been Prion. And um, your friend Moriah went straight to Council councilwoman Edda Olin's home to own to warn her where would you have gone in this situation knowing that you guys had maybe accidentally released a vampire I would have gone to the temple okay very good that is where we will open then at the temple as um, the two of you run down. There is already a bit of activity. Welgar Brinehand, this tall, old, um, sort of salt-crusted uh, priest. He's got lo a long beard, long gray hair sort of tumbling over his shoulders and wears ceremonial robes. Um, he is sort of gruffly milling about and um, as you near it, uh, excuse me, I'm looking for the correct page. Um, uh, here it is. And as you near, near the Temple of Vulcar here, um, you can see that he is looking out into the distance because as you have been approaching too, you've just heard this enormous scream let out, echoing from the town, literally someone screaming bloody murder. And... Um, Welgar Brinehand runs up to the two of you. What's this then? What's going on tonight? Um. I think. I think there's a vampire on the loose. You've got to be joking. I'm I afraid joke. not. Mm -mm. An actual vampire. It's, it's yeah. a bit of a crazy story. Mm. There was this... I swear I haven't been drinking, but there was this crab. And it was talking to us. <laughs> he looks like he's not quite sure whether to relax or to be very worried at this moment as the way the explanation has started. But he looks at you indicating maybe reluctantly to go on. It was down in a basement and uh, one of our members brought the crab or the whatever it was upstairs and it released it. And it ended up being a vampire turned into a crab. I know that you're waiting for a punchline, but I swear to God, there's none. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Um, so that's why we're here now. We thought you would like to know. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to leave town now, you know. <laughs> sort out your own problems. And uh, do you mind if we use your bed while you check it out? We're really tired. <laughs> <laughs> this sort of tall figure goes to the corner of the um, temple where you're at and just kind of bends down and there's this pile of kind of what looks like junk and he pulls what looks to be an old piece of ship with a porthole that was on it. Um, the porthole seems to be boarded up. Kind of flips it around and you can see that the the sea has left its mark. There are shells, barnacles, and like yours, Talise, if you look hard enough, it's, despite being sheltered from any water, it's a little bit wet, and the marine life, the marks of the sea upon it, very subtly uh, form the symbol of Valkor. And he takes this piece of shipwreck and sort of straps it on his arm and then reaches down and in, more into the junk and pulls out a belaying pin. And then he grabs 
hanging around his neck, his holy symbol, and mutters something under his breath. Well, for better or for worse, let's go then. And starts walking up to the village. I'll follow. With the two of you in tow. Uh, in now, tow. sorry. <laughs> Mariah, you have just come to the Oland residence. Um, whether it be frantic knocking on the door or telling one of the front guards to go in and summon, you are well known enough in this town at the moment for th the favors you've done for the Oland family or just your general exploits to be um, at least heated when you come screaming about something being an emergency and you're brought into their receiving room very briefly and soon at a Oland kind of emerges uh, coming down a, a set of stairs clutching a um, uh, sort of tightening a beautiful um, night robe and looks at you and just with confusion at about that point before you can explain the same blood curdling scream echoes through the town from the direction of the Solmore manse and you hear a loud <laughs> crash as if a large piece of masonry has been fallen from a great height ah shit's already getting started okay I am so sorry to bother you this late at night. Um, there's kind of an emergency situation. As you might be able to hear, um, long story short, there's a vampire. It lived by the crabs. It's Excuse me, in what? town now. Vampire. In town. Seeking apparently to wreak havoc and reveal secrets and things. It's not clear to me what exactly it wants, but we're kind of wrapped up in it, and I didn't want your leadership to not know, and you seem like a level-headed person. I came to you. Ha! Huh? You're serious, aren't you? I am entirely serious, and I really wish I wasn't. She looks about and um, quickly orders a couple of the guards to wake her um, seneschal, and some of her best, um, most trusted um, members of her clan, really. And they quickly um, grab gear, gather things as she retreats to um, discuss and figure out exactly what the next step is. But she mm -hmm. sends them immediately to investigate um, gotcha, about everybody. five heavily armed um, Oland family members start to go in that direction. Great. Um, and that's just quickly. Um, what's a up? message from Elena's mum? Elena, sorry, I forgot to give you your pocket money this week. Here's ten dollars. Oh, but not really. We just had a donation from <laughs> Elena's mum for ten dollars. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elena's mum. Thanks, mum. Thanks, mum. Love Elena's mum. She's the best. Pocket money. <laughs> pocket money. That's I, I haven't gotten my allowance yet this week. Oh yeah, you guys called it allowance. That's right. God. Damn it, I need to Americanize. Uh, Mrs. Le Mrs. Leda, can we order pizza? <laughs> <laughs> it's some Sprite. Uh, it's that's a, a healing potion. potion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's a healing potion. Okay. A healing potion. Beautiful. Uh, so let's roll for the uh, rarity. Low is good. 25. So that's a um, greater healing potion. I think. Is it? I never remember. God, I don't even... I, th I think you do under twenty five percent, didn't you? Is a great year. Under twenty, under twenty percent. Oh, is it? it if you, if you want to keep it consistent across the streams, it's a twenty percent chance of a greater. Thank yeah. you. I do want to keep it consistent. <laughs> um, that will appear in um someone's pack. Nether. Uh, Nether. You have a healing potion. Lovely. <laughs> Your friends have not yet joined you. You have just come to the Solmore estate um, at the behest of Jolek, who invited you there to witness this. And you see 
this guard coming around the corner babbling again about not putting orders in writing just as he does this a large piece of um, chimney seems to crack off of the roof of the Solmore estate and absolutely crush the man against the wall um what was left of his upper body is mostly just splattered across the cobblestone pavement some of the Solmore guards have just rushed out hearing this in and then also you saw under Solmore's butler and seneschal um scarin wave chaser his sort of wiry form darted out of the compound looking absolutely alert and at the ready there was a clarity in his vision and quickness about the way he moved that seemed very uncharacteristic of him he regards all of you for a moment and then sees the, the guard and then relaxes and kind of leans against the wall in his typical nature um, um is there anything of the body i mean is it like under a rock or is it uh, more like under a pile of bricks at the moment all right i immediately send doll over invisibly to begin searching his body for any notes or anything that could potentially be orders in writing um okay have a uh, doll make an investigation check then all righty just it will be me tough because this at this moment a couple other guards are coming to attend to the body at the moment so she'll have a quick chance to look over things okay right i'll roll the kraken and let me bring up the stats i apologize i wasn't ready with the stats yeah it's okay the stats must be ready with the stats okay here we go get your stats here Whack. Uh, it's a 16. Um, <clears throat> uh, on the crack and die roll of a 13 plus three, 16. Um, with, uh, with a 16, you find, um, not much, but in there's a pouch with his um, a few coins in it, but also tucked into the the um, chainmail armor up by the neck. There is a small piece of parchment. Um, as Dahl sort of tugs on it, it looks to be ripped, and you can only see the end of a bit of writing that was once on it. And you just see the word cove and then dark. Is there anything as if they were on separate lines of writing? Cove some, and dark. Could Doll take this and put it on its person so that it would become invisible along with it? Uh, make a sleight of hand check for Doll. Yee. On the crack and die. 17 plus. So just dex plus four. Yeah, so 21 effortlessly, Doll is able to whoop, 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 kind of just roll it up in, in uh, Doll's hands and put it in a little cylinder. And it's like a scroll for them, which would be a tiny scrap of a piece of paper for a normal person. But Doll is able to stow that away invisibly. Cool. Just at that moment, the guards come and start excavating and um, revealing sort of the mess that has been made of this um, soldier. Doll flies back to me and puts it in my hand and I squirt it away. And um, so Inaris, Melvin, and uh, um Nether, you see Scarin giving a couple orders, whispering to a couple of the mercenaries. Some more come out and begin to drag the body back into the compound. Um, um, uh, Scarin then approaches the four of you. 
the characteristic emotionless kind of dull look on his face and eyes. Um, it's a little bit more sharpness than normal, but he seems calm and his gait is slow as normal. He looks at all of you. Do you have any idea what happened here? I have an idea. Nope, no clue. It just looks like a chimney fell. Or a vampire pushed the chimney. A what? I'm innocent. I didn't have anything to do with this shit, but somehow there's a vampire going after people. I think it's going after Goldilocks. Uh, Honestly, I tried to get him to go after the other one. I don't think he's a vampire. He's definitely a vampire. I would expect a vampire to be a lot uglier. So you saw who did this? No, but I have a pretty good, pretty good idea. No, I don't think we know who did that, but I mean, well, I suppose you can't. Is there anything remaining of the neck? Of the the torn out neck of this guy. Well, they're dragging the body in, but it looks like the the head and a lot of the upper body have been mostly crushed. I mean, the wind didn't blow it over. I should hope not. What about you, Triton? What did you see? Um. Well, show him your drawing. I. That's private. Oh my god. Show him your drawing. I swear to Persona, I'm just trying. It's so good. I didn't see anything because I've been, I've been working on a on a poem. But it's not important. I'll ask. I'll ask you later, Melvin. What you think? I need some feedback. Oh, okay. I didn't see anything. Can, I've been busy. I can give you some feedback. Oh, right now is now okay. No, yeah, we we read need it. it later. I don't. I don't think uh, this. Is... Read oh, it. Oh, okay. Read it. Okay. Read it. <clears throat> and. Oh, to Jolek. When we met beneath the shack, I must admit, love, I did lack. But when I met your eyes so true, I knew at once what I must do. Your pallid skin and sunken eyes, others around me may despise. But when I your countenance behold, inside me surges love so bold. My comrades doubt you, this I know, but your true colors I will show. Let us commence our work of art with love unending, your pure of heart. And that's what he calls me. He calls me his pure of heart. So and just as you say that, the charm fades from you. Oh. <laughs> you you wrote that between the shack and here? Just you just wrote it? In in the last hour? Uh yeah. Uh, it, this is my handwriting, but I, I don't remember writing this. Who's Jolek? You do remember what happened. Whether or not you're lying about that is up to you, but you remember the feelings you had for him, but you just now know that those have stopped. Like and... Mad Mardigan and Willow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it went away. Uh, and you see Same her... happens then for you, Nether, at that moment as well. Oh. You see her turn a deep shade of coral. I I don't know who Jolek is. Who's Jolek? She throws her journal on the ground. Shuffles you it behind under herself. under some sort of enchantment. Melvin picks up the journal. <laughs> Enchant- I th- some sort of enchantment? Yes. That vampires uh, he, can do? Jolek looks around Oh my god, everybody. that's right. He's a vampire. I, I apo- I'm so sorry. I... I didn't realize. I, I thought there was something to be suspicious about, but, but then, then he told me that I should I should try to convince you that it was all fine. I was and I think about I did. To tell you all that he was a vampire, and I knew it. And then the next thing I knew, I was. Never mind. I don't know who Jolek is. Who's Jolek? It's about this time. Reddins. Scarin's eyes are just darting Purples. between you, taking this in. He repeats under his breath. Beneath the shack. And then um, at that point, Mariah returns. Prion and um, uh, Talise, you guys return as well with Welgar Brine Hand in tow, or maybe even the other way around. 
And all of you are reunited here at this scene. A trail of blood leading from the alleyway as this body has been pulled into the um, Solmore estate to get it off of the street. Two of the mercenary guards standing there flanking Scare and Wave Chaser as he just is staring at you, trying to sort of make sense of what all of this is. Are all of you okay? Hmm. Yeah, we're fine. <sighs> My ears the, the guard are a bit was damaged. Killed. Oh no, not your ears. Nether sort of slips to the shadows as she can and casts invisibility on herself. <laughs> I'm going to make a stealth check, Nether, to slip into the shadows. I have the Kraken's butt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have some um, uh, As you start to sort of sneak out, you will um, hear Scarin's voice. Where exactly do you think you're going? I, I just, there's so many people. I, I, I think I'll just, I'll just be over okay. here. You've <laughs> witnessed a crime. Hmm. How about you come over here, okay? Nether was killed by sharks. I'm Debris. Sorry, De Elena Braid. <laughs> uh, Debris, how about you come over here, all right? It's going to be fine. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm copying that sonnet into my notebook <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Oh, in my hand to write into my excellent. own book. I'm reading. <laughs> I hope the that. That was amazing. Is like walk, like trying to like get it out of your hands. Um. Oh. So, so Nene, you guys witnessed a crime? Not exactly. Witn witnessed the actual event as the aftermath. Who was it? Pretty sure it was the vampire, because I don't know what else. No, no, the victim. Some dude. Helpful. Okay. Um, I think it was a guard. Uh, yeah. He he stumbled around a bit, and then the chimney fell on him. Then I point to the the pile of bricks. What did he say? <laughs> it was oh. one of our personal guards. One of them that we brought to help keep the order here. Now Who would do see. such a thing? I don't know, but oh, one of he was babbling hires? at the time. He must have been drunk and delirious, I'm sure. Unfortunate. Wow. So you guys really good at picking your guards then. Wait, are we so. sure he was drunk and delirious? I mean, I and yeah. Debris had been, well, okay, fine. I wrote that really embarrassing poem about Jolik. Okay, but I just want to move past it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Anyway, I had been um, I had been charmed. Are we are we sure that he wasn't also charmed? Did he have a, a history of being drunk? I mean, I just feel like that's a very rude assumption to make about someone. You're talking some kind of nonsense, Welgar. Have they been saying the same things to you? And he will kind of. Well, the story they told me was, well, if not believable, quite frightening. I see no reason to distrust him. And, sorry, you're muted, uh, Debris. Nether looks at my, my Mariah and says, you should tell them what happened. What we saw, I can help. The short of it is that one of your own town's children, uh, and likely under the influence of this creature, alerted as, us to... As she says this, Nether creates minor illusion to create the picture of the boy. Okay. Um, he alerted us to someone needing help out by Crabber's Cove. Told us it was a crab. We've Changes seen stranger crab. things. So, you know... And for all intents and purposes, it seemed that the crab was talking to us and indicated that it was cursed in some way and needed assistance removing its curse. Um, Sarayan being the necessary component as having a pure heart. Um, 
when indeed it turned out that there was not actually a crab. Oh, well, there were many crabs, but this was not a crab, but rather a vampire residing in the basement. Nether creates the image of the desiccated look of the vampire. Whom, who convinced using its natural wiles, uh, two of our compatriots to assist it, um, while the rest of us did not know its true nature. And once it was released... She creates the image of Jolek in all his glory. Then he's free to run rampant and seems hell-bent on revealing this town's secrets, whatever that may be. And Nether creates a picture of the guard coming out with his hand or in his throat, blood streaming from it, his eyes wide. <laughs> I was not here immediately when this happened because I went directly to alert Etta Oland. I figured the more authorities were alerted to the situation, the better. We have absolutely no reason to lie to you. This is a stupid thing to lie about. I don't want anyone to die. Okay? That's why we're here, speaks up the leader of the three, or the five Oland guards. Wave chaser. I think I speak for my family in saying that, well, we'll need to institute a curfew. Fishermen won't like, wait until dawn to have to leave, but I think it's necessary. Make sure everyone's inside. Is it true? Is it true, Brinehand, what they say about vampires and garlic and all those old tales? And, uh, um, Wellgar just kind of, uh, I don't know much except that they're things of evil. And, well, we should hold to Volker and the other sea gods to protect us in this time. And probably not go alone. As for rituals and omens and such, I have no knowledge of that. Um, I can, I can at least tell you that garlic is not helpful. Uh, a stake to the heart, though, generally, is what I've heard. I've heard that too, but that never had the chance to test it myself. What? A stake to the heart would kill anyone, would it not? Usually does. Well, it, it doesn't kill them, though. It paralyzes them. If you do it in the right place. I think the important thing is it has to be a stake to the heart and not necessarily a stake to anywhere else. Whereas mm -hmm. another creature might just die of blood loss. Then what happens once it's paralyzed? Cut its head off and set it you on fire? You just kill it. That's, that's a good question. I've, I've never had to put it into practice before, so I wouldn't know. Check would Let be me... associated with knowing that. Uh, religion. Religion, you were saying. Nah, 14. Are you Probably sure not. you don't want help on that? Um, I... If you Says the want clear. help, do, uh, do, you, do you want to? You can, roll your own. you can roll your own religion yeah, check. Go ahead. No, no since <laughs> yeah, yeah, I rolled since I never get to roll religion checks. Yay! Roll that cleric knowledge <laughs> with a five. Oh. Do you want some help from your? Bestie? You're you're sitting there and you it's you open silly. your mouth to speak and then you kind of are like. I thought the garlic was going to work. <laughs> I really wasn't paying attention during vampire class. Oh, you know. <laughs> I just like eating garlic well, food. That's all I cared about. I, I'm going to throw this out there. I, This doesn't necessarily seem like vampire ra rampage through town kill everyone sort of situation. For better or for worse, and while we don't know why, he seems to have a specific agenda. So while we certainly want to keep the rest of the townsfolk out of his way, because um, I feel like, you know, wrong place, wrong time might totally get someone killed. Um, 
there's probably going to be some sort of pattern or some sort of specificity to whatever he ends up doing here. Um, and I think we probably just need to do our best to keep everyone safe and not try to necessarily like go after it. I'm not convinced that we're equipped for that. Just he probably won't stay that. around. If you think of him as not a creature of evil, but more as a predator. This place would be too small for him. People disappearing one at a time under mysterious circumstances might go unnoticed for a little while. But he'd need a bigger place, bigger city, some place he could be anonymous. seems to me that now that he's been released, he'll go somewhere else. Although that, he may that's what reveal I more weak links in this so-called chain before he does. So in the meantime, Scare and Wave Chaser, the uh, butler to um, Anders Solmore, speaks up again. We increase our security and if it proves to be a passing threat all the better that sounds pretty good to me how Solmore will make it so we will double our patrols in the streets will Oland do so as well and the the uh, um, Oland representatives sort of nod and talk between themselves before turning and going. If you have any other information or poetry to share, please do. And he pulls his guards back into the um, Soulmore complex and the main door is shut and you hear a latching sound as um, voices start to rise and you hear footsteps begin to um, go along the walls. It sounds like more and more of the guards are being summoned, woken up, gas, or um, not gas, but just lanterns are being lit to more um, adequately illuminate the whole courtyard inside. But you just see the light sort of spilling up into the night over the other side of the walls. And you are left alone with Welgar and the blood smear leading into the Solmore compound. Well, sorry, this is everyone. Pleasant. I, I, I'm sorry. I should have been more alert. That was it's stupid. Not your fault, Nether. Mm. I looked to Sir Ian. Debris. No, Nether, Nether's not here. Debris. Debris. I looked to hey. Sir Ian. We need to be a bit more careful. I hope you're not suggesting that the fact that he charmed me was my fault. No. But was he charmed from the beginning? Was who charmed from the beginning? <laughs> was Serene charmed from the beginning? No. Before you'd even gone down there? No. She didn't change her about... behavior until after. I'm not singling anyone out. I'm just saying we need to be a bit more careful. If there's evil like that, that's down there, it's for a reason, is it not? I mean, we we did vote, to be fair to Serene. It wasn't entirely her decision. She did put it up to a vote, and we, we decided to let her do what she thought was right. Aye, by that time. Thank you, Melvin. Also, here's your notebook. How did you get that back? You, you threw it on the ground and I kicked thought... it behind you, so I picked it up. <sighs> you, you shouldn't kick your books. It's not good for them. It's fine. I was really embarrassed. I understand. Well, it's a pretty while, nice sonnet, though. Oh, sorry. While that conversation is going on, I'm standing next to another. I've just put an arm around her shoulder if she lets me, and just kind of keep her close. Muted. I go to bed. You sure? I want to get away from here. Okay. 
Send word if you need anything, please. I think we should all get away from here. That might be a good idea. Back to the ship? To the ship. To the ship. To the <laughs> ship, let's go. To the ship. To the ship. To the... Exactly. Is there a... Is there a um... That's what I was thinking. From Peter Pan. Peter um, Pan. <laughs> is there a... Um... There's an inn we're staying at, right? Or are we are we actually staying on the ship? I'm recall? staying on the ship. I think Sarayan made a point of not staying on the ship because she she has the uh, the cash <laughs> as befitting her station to uh, seek better lodgings. So that is up to all of you. You will have to pay for lodging, or you can sleep for free on your own ship. Go to the, the boat. A boat. I'm going to the boat. All right. A boat and we're on gonna a sleep boat. and <laughs> everyone gosh, heads back to the boat. Really good American accent. Yeah. <laughs> Jade is just so talented, guys. Ten out was, of was, ten. Was was that real or is that was that was that unintent? Never mind. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do an accent. <laughs> do the boat. All right. Yeah. To the boat then. So to the boat with all of you, mm -hmm. and uh, were you going to say oh. something to Lise? <laughs> no, that was me, uh, Mor Moriah. Why did he want us to meet him here? She asks, on the boat. We're on He's the boat now. On the boat. <laughs> yep, you guys have gotten there. there. It's all fine. You're by yourself. The captain's cabin has a table that it's not, it's a little shoulder to shoulder, but all of you can be seated around it and have your privacy and speak and have some comfortable yeah setting there um he never showed well potentially he did with the you know the death bit but um i i wasn't there so i i couldn't have seen anything i don't know the details other than there's a there's a smushed man um mm -hmm. but, but... mariah i actually had a question um you seem like you've um traveled a bunch do you know anything about the black network the the guy who who got crushed mentioned it right before he got crushed uh yeah yeah i'm familiar there's a previous knowledge check about this that i rolled really high on so yes i am familiar <laughs> <laughs> um also known as the zentarum not not great not not great stuff there uh oh melvin when when we were with um when we were you know, remember we were digging around in the trash in um yeah the lizard camp uh -huh. and we found that that bit that had that symbol on it that's them oh, oh okay yeah I, re I remember that now so if we take this creature at his word that he was grateful to us for being stupid enough to free him and that there was secrets he wanted to help us find the answers to mm. specifically having to do with scare and wave chaser at least that's what he told me so okay that that was that's something you remember from before yes the he charm took effect said if i convinced you all that he was he should be helped that there were things he could tell me relating to scare and wave chaser Interesting. and then he went to tell us to meet at that spot and he killed that man do you think that was the message that was the link the fact that he was a part of the black network and the little scroll appears in my hand that he had this and put it on the table. It's just a little corner of a piece of paper that says Cove and Shack. Or Cove and, um, sorry. Uh, Dark? Dark. No, no, yeah. You should have to see it. I think it says Love Shack. <laughs> <laughs> if you hold it like this, it, it definitely looks like a C, but you put it this way, it looks like an L. Only if you hold it up to the light of the full moon. <laughs> then sorry. Sorry, that's the wrong scroll. Uh... 
Well, I mean, it could be a lot of things, but it's hard not to ignore the connection between Cove and Crabber's Cove. Just, I don't know. Are, are there other local well-known coves that get cove in their name? Um, <laughs> um, honestly, Mariah, as a sailor, you could think of half a dozen. Oh, um, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's a common feature in uh, maritime geography. Well, um, I, but like, and oftentimes cities locally, are built around though. them. So, but like in here, this um, area. Uh, let me check. I believe that it's mostly just um, sort of the harborage and then the cove up north. So, no, nothing is really re nothing else is referred to in this immediate area as a cove. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I my instinct kind of tells me that, you know, there may be a sort of thankfulness involved in this, but I almost feel like this is a little bit chaotic. You know, he's free now. He can act upon things that he knows and he can wreak havoc on town simply because he can. And why, then why also would maybe... Why want to do that? Why? Imagine that you've been trapped somewhere for decades or longer and you're free. Well, I am intrigued by the fact that he mentioned Scare and Wave Chaser specifically because the other thing that one might do once they're freed after so many years of imprisonment is to screw over someone who put you there. I wonder if that boy is safe. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, he let you guys go. It's a tool to do the job. We should probably still check on him in the morning. Sorry, I've... Good night, everybody. And Nether goes to the little smuggler's closet. Um, M Mariah, do you think that we should tell the rest of the council about this and maybe let them know that the that um wave chaser and possibly uh Solmorn are involved with the black network I don't know we told Solmorn about the Zentarum presence in the lizard folk area I have a lot of trouble, and the rest of you, you know, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I get the sense that Anders himself would have some difficulty working with people that he knew were Zentarum. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it was possible for them to pull the wool over his eyes. I think he probably has no idea. If there is someone in that group, I don't think he would know. He's very, I don't know a good word for it. But, yeah. Naive. Let's be Pure honest. That's heart. a good word. He's got Pure no heart. idea. The rain <laughs> well, let's, under I, her breath. Pure of heart. I agree. Let's use pure of heart. So I He's so pure wanted... of heart, he's got no idea what's going That's on. That's it. That's it. Well, well, if the we wall's been to, uh... completely pulled over his eyes like the if whole we wanted face. to let him know that that um wave chaser might be involved without letting wave chaser know i think i have a solution for that um but i wouldn't want to go out of my way to do that unless the rest of you think it's a good idea i mm -hmm. oh here's the other thing um, on that subject, um, the Scarin said that the guard that was killed was one of the new ones, the ones that the Solmar estate has been bringing in lately. Point of concern. Um, 
I, I, I kind of wonder whether we just see where the next die falls and progress from there because I don't know who to trust outside the people in this room slash Nether's cubby hole. Debris cubby hole. Fuck. <sighs> Plus, uh, Stuffy Pants seems to be on our side, so I would hate to rat him out. You mean Scarin? Mm-hmm. Is he, though? Seems to be. I, I thought he was a known factor, and now I don't believe myself anymore. So... We yeah. could just wait and see what happens next and decide from there. It's a good idea. Yeah. We're too new. We don't know who to trust. Mm-hmm. My vote is none of them. Trust none of them, but, you know. Hey. Yeah. I mean, at least the priest is okay. The priest has yes. got to be okay. Yes. Well, no, not necessarily because the priestesses back home were not oh. no no excuse you it's true i was gonna ask you if your ears were okay because you said that you hurt them and now i'm not i don't care well they were hurt because of the of a poem that made them bleed but other than that they're great oh my gosh i told you i, st- I want to stop talking about it oh. i guess i won't offer my services to write a song then no, your your writing's actually good. Well, Sarayan goes and sits in the corner facing the wall like a petulant child. <laughs> <laughs> um So I just quickly we... massive thank you to Fable 42 for the raid. Hey. Oh, hey guys. Hey. Welcome to all the raiders. So I know that Solo's got to go, so I wanted to quickly get that in. So thank you. Thanks guys. Welcome. The uh party is aboard the ship kind of wondering what needs to be done as they have sort of realized that they have unleashed a vampire upon the town of salt marsh however the vampire has declared their intentions to be revealing a dark secret and this seems to be um related to someone they've been working with uh scaring wave chaser seems to have accused or the implication is perhaps that he is a member of this entarum or the black network and that this evil creature they have just released is may just seem to suggest he's trying to reveal some dark um, secrets about salt marsh so that is what the party is discussing at the moment yeah on top of that as well we are sponsored by crack and dice we're doing some store credit as giveaway we give away two sets of fifteen dollars a show so if uh, the new guys that have just come in want to join and want a chance of winning exclamation mark giveaway will give yourself a ticket that'll do it yeah yeah well there's probably not that much that we can do right this moment so maybe everyone get a good night's sleep and we'll come back to this fresh in the morning um well why why don't i write this this letter that I'm thinking about writing, and then we can decide whether we want to send it or not. That's totally fine. I mean, oh. I can always write another one, but um, actually, if you do have a spare moment, though, Melvin, I totally forgot about this. Um, and was gonna give this to you, and then get you a know, vampire. Um, <laughs> I so I reach into my pack and I um get out the uh, uh sand ballots spell book. Um. It, we got this off of a guy who was kind of a dick to us. So he's dead. Um, but oh. you can probably use it. So, you know. A book? Thanks. Yeah. Also, have we oh. taken into consideration... A spell book. Okay. Yeah. The vampire's lying? <sighs> yes. Just some food for thought before we immediately write letters and incriminate stuffy pants. I'm just thinking, why would he lie? If he's been Mm -hmm. released, he's going after the people that conspired against him. For for the right reasons. He's a damn vampire, for Christ's sake. 
but he also charmed them so he read their thoughts so he knew we were working with him so why not i'm so not sure that part? that's necessarily how that works though like i mean look at what happened to debris and serene you know they they all of a sudden treated him as a friend mm -hmm. and were inclined to help him but otherwise acted the same way that they normally would it almost seems to me like he sort of just changes the rules a little bit for them does that mean serean is writing poems about all of this stop oh my god i'm so Ryan is actually in the corner writing another sonnet that will be uh, revealed in the morning. <laughs> Melvin, can, can, can I can I see it? Can I see it? <laughs> oh, I can see it. She's like I said in the corner, like a petulant child okay. facing the wall, but she can hear you over her shoulder, and she keeps shooting furtive looks whenever she hears her name mentioned. <laughs> I just want to compliment her rhyme scheme, but I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a chance. Um, DM, I'm going to sit down at the desk if um, Mariah will allow it um, and start going through the drawers of the desk looking for some parchment that I can use. Okay. If no, there is any. Yes, there is plenty to write a letter with. Okay. Um, and I will uh, ritually cast Illusory Script as I write this letter, specifying all of the members of my party and uh, Soulmourn specifically. Okay. As the, the people who can read the intended message. Um, and I will write it, write the message out as um, saying that a member of your guard was a member of the Black Network, the Zentarum. Unclear who hired them or if it was intentional. Keep an eye out. Um, and this will look like a request for supplies for the ship to anyone who I did not specify. Okay. Gotcha. You're writing it, but you haven't sent it yet, correct? Correct. I'm, I'm literally just casting this on the, on the parchment as I write and writing that out. And we can decide whether we want to give it to him at any point. And I'll explain to the party that on it to us and to Soulmourn, this will look like what you can read. To everyone, anyone else, it will look like a list of supplies that we need for the ship. Interesting and cool. Is there Still a duration a on that? Uh, ten days. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's easily done. And anything else before you bring this evening to a close? I have one quick thing that I want to do once everyone kind of scoots off. So, unless anyone has anything else in the group bit. Nope. The Doesn't sound okay. like it. Leave. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, go down to the wall where the entrance to um, the hidden compartment is, where uh, Debris has taken up residence. Um, just gonna do a little knock on the door. Um, Debris, I don't know if you're awake and I don't need to come in or anything, but I just, I wanted to apologize that it, you were charmed and I didn't know what to do. I cast a spell on you to try to influence your behavior in that moment for what I thought was best. And while I felt that it was the right thing to do at the time, it was still one way or another an infringement on your behavior. And I do apologize for that. So I'll see you in the morning and go back to the cabin. No response. Okay. And lulled to sleep by the gently rocking boat. You all have your rest and awaken fully rested to a bright, clear, sunny morning. By the time you wake up, the 
rising sun has already burned away the morning fog. It's a perfect day to be out on the water. The fishing boats are out early, and it's a beautiful day for you. Uh, I have things to do, uh, but... Um, Sarayan approaches the group. Are we all, like, near enough by? Are people around, DM? Um, yeah, I mean, everyone is probably milling about the ship in the morning, getting ready to go. Um, okay. Most of the crew has left to go continue Good. restocking the ship, repairing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I realized that some of you were offended by my poem yesterday. Um, so I've written another one to say I'm sorry. <clears throat> My friends, dear friends, I now must say, my feelings, they had gone astray. A vampire I profess to love, I don't know how, persona above. Bamboozled by a fiend I was, I now apologize because, to love Jolek I know was wrong, Mariah, don't make this a song. So sorry from my heart so true, I hope that we can start anew. Please let us no longer quarrel, Love from your dear friend of Coral. And she kind of just nods her head and rushes off. Melvin starts clapping. No, no, that please was, don't. That was, that was fantastic, you? but did I miss the first one? No, nope, nothing else was ever said. Um, um, Melvin, Melvin. Hey, Melvin. Oh, do, you, um, do you have that first Melvin one? pulls out the, the book and, and shows it. She she wrote or she wrote one to the vampire the other night. <gasps> I don't okay, okay. I don't think can I try she to, wants that. Like, try to grab the book. Wants that to be read ever again. You you can try. It I is will try. it is uh, <laughs> attached to Melvin. He, he wears a belt with a with a Sarayan. strap that attaches to the book. Sarayan, a wonderful writer. And while I will heed your request to not turn this into a song. It could easily be done, for you are an expert wordsmith. And that's half the battle when it comes to making a good song. Aye. Hmm. It, was, it was incredible. Thank you for sharing. Ah. Well, shall we go see if anyone else in the town has been killed yet? I, sure. I need some help, I think. No, what's up? Um, Syrian, you have beautiful clothes. Thank you, thank you. And I have all this money now. Uh, I was thinking that I would find something else to wear other than rags and nets, although I do like the nets. No, you look very, very stylish. Where are the clothes I lent you? Hi. Oh, I I lost them. Oh, okay. I, you can get me a new linen shirt while you're out. <laughs> yes, I'll do that. <laughs> it's easy. They're at the bottom oh. of the sea, as yes, she... I I remember. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> oh, no, that's I I have other errands to run, but I I would appreciate some help. I I, I don't think I've ever even seen a clothing store in town i've actually never never seen a clothing store above above the uh the ocean so yeah let's go shopping. there's a vampire in town and we're going shopping i will be taking notes i, I am going shopping with the paladin mind <laughs> Okay. Who is there a charged? clothing store in town? There are there are um, one or two, like some trader trading companies that specify in clothes. Um, yeah, Tarjay. absolutely. Oh, so I was like some trader Johannes. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of want to come with. I want to see this. I actually have to do some some general shopping myself. I'm starting to run low on some spell components, so I, I'll come with you guys. I don't know much about clothes though. Well, 
we can go on some errands and just, you know, be on the lookout for blood and fangs and stuff. Besides, even if even if the vampire is still around, it's daylight. What difference does that make? Vampires don't like daylight. Or running water, for that matter. Why would they not like running water? I don't know. That one never made sense to me. Maybe it's like right. garlic. Yeah. I have to go to the bridge for a moment, but um, then shopping. Great shopping. We set a meeting point. <laughs> that is in a central location in town where shopping may be had. So the garment point. district. The murder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the there, garment district. There is no... Um, uh, there is no garment district. However, there is a, a couple markets that are set up actually kind of around the bridge. The bridge itself has some high-end shops and there are some other, um, if you go to like the different trading companies owned by the families, you could also buy some clothing there. So you have lots of options, um, depending if you're looking for something foreign or something practical and crafted here. Oh, uh, Nether, I do in my... Um... I'm just dead. Shit, fuck, tits, damn it. Sorry, um, Debri, um, I, I said Nether because I have actually have a note about this that still has Nether's yeah, name even in it. Shorts, um, Shorts calling himself Nether, yeah. he's done it a few times. Um, <laughs> I always refer to myself as Nether. He does. I, Debri, I still have a, um, a small little pouch here of some gold of yours that you asked me to hold on to, so um, you should probably take that back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Have a hundred gold, Sean. <laughs> wow. Rolling in it. A, you guys have a lot of gold. Yeah. Yeah, but for some of us, money is no object. <laughs> you could. You just you you heard the ship repair costs. It's a little spendy, but you could do that. You could. There's plenty you could do. Can't buy magical items. I don't even know what you, I'm buying. You have had that option as well, and you turned them down. <laughs> we, did, we didn't have the money then. Ooh. I know. Oh, true. True. Um, Peter, while we're around town shopping, I'm going to keep my eye out for the uh, wizard's house tower thing place. Okay. Um, we happen to go yeah, by. Yeah. So it is on the oh. edge of town on the, the southern portion. Um, as you are going to the bridge, you can see it um, standing on a cliff to the, basically to the southeast of town. Um, but it's there. It looks, I mean, it's, there's, it's one of three sort of tower structures in town. Um, one of them being uh, what you have, what's been pointed out to you is what they call Hool Watch Tower, which is one of the, um, sort of guard bases um there is also a tower sort of lighthouse looking tower um at eliander fireborn's home which is on the southern part of town and then there's what looks to be just a tower situated on um the center of a small lake which sits just on the edge of salt marsh is there um, a map there is, but it does not represent exactly what I just described to you. Oh, okay. So at um, the bridge, I... Nether goes down and just to the edge and finds a water lily and gently picks it. And as she does, uh, she casts um, Ray of Frost, freezing it and making it sort of desiccated. Okay. And then she just has it and puts it away, you know, wraps up it up in a in a cloth and puts it away for the time being. That's all. Sorry. All right. What shop should we go to first, y'all? Which way is north on this map? Are we all going shopping? This is north is to confusing. the left. It is, but okay. it's not. It's uh cool. Just you know, just kind of let it be because okay. salt marsh is also <laughs> also the ocean is 
facing just, is to the never is, mind. Is just to never the west mind. of Salt Marsh, which is <laughs> clearly not the case here. I'm gonna say, and I should have okay. flipped it long ago, but hadn't. So just use this as reference, a general reference oh, of the, the layout of town. Oh. This this map has a bridge. It does. And that's the only way that it represents Salt Marsh. <laughs> that's incorrect. It also has the stand. It's it's got everything, but yeah. Everything and nothing at the same time. It also time. has giant words at the top of it that say salt marsh. But what? That's a lie. Uh, oh my yeah. god, who put those there? <laughs> like the Hollywood <laughs> sign. It's like the Hollywood sign. Oh my god, salt marsh yes. Clothier? Clothier? Seven Wonders of the Sword first? Coast. What? Cl uh, <laughs> All right. cl clothing first? Clothing first, yes. Our, what kind of garment is Nether looking for? She's looking for something um, elegant that is inspired by um, her old uh, decor, which was um, a lot of old nets, which were kind of made into shawls and wraps, that sort of thing. She's looking for something more adult. So, um, assuming that Debris has kind of described what she's looking for to Sarayan, she says, well, I, I, I really did actually very much, I do like the texture of what you're wearing a lot. I think it's very interesting. Do you, do you mind if I, if I, if I feel it? No. Oh, oh okay. And so she reaches out a webbed hand and begins again because she's very tactile to do kind of like feeling rubbing it between her little fingies <sighs> i think the closest thing that you would find to this that you want if you want it to be similar but but more elegant maybe maybe something with lace hmm. have you worn lace no well now you're rich and you can <laughs> And she takes her by the hand and starts to pretty kind nice of like waddle off towards the clothier. The finest I'm, clothier I'm in, in town. I'm five feet behind. So, uh, uh, Debris, how old are you? Oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, twenty-two. Oh, okay. This is going to sound insensitive. Um, how old were you before? I don't like talking about that. No, I'm just I'm just curious because I I'm the oldest of my siblings. And when you were the before, you were the same age, I think, as one of my siblings. So, I mean, that's the only that's the only reason. Another was 14. Oh, yeah. I have a sister who was who was 14. And she actually kind of reminds me of you in personality. She uh, she also likes to be sad. I just, from behind. <laughs> okay. But I remember being 14 is hard. I'm I'm 17 now, so I'm grown up. But yeah, I, I do remember being 14 was really, really tough. I remember when I was younger and I was 14, it was really hard. What exactly was hard for you about being 14? I just had a lot of feelings. A lot of feelings. Yeah. Hmm. Good thing I don't have those anymore. Just the one. Sadness. I guess that does make it easier. <clears throat> what were you um, up to when you were 14? Uh, uh, um... I was I was learning how um, to to prepare myself to be a, a fighter, and I was um, I was in some sort of like finishing classes because you know being like a princess they wanted me to also be able to be be elegant, which is what we're trying to do today. Hmm. Thrilling. Yeah, it was. Maybe this isn't I guess such it wasn't a good that idea. Hard. How about we at least find you something that fits and you're comfortable in, okay? It's 
going to do you well, especially when we're out on the boat, to have clothes that you feel comfortable moving around in, okay? I do feel uncomfortable. Perfect. Something we can solve. Okay, should I leave? Or? No, no, you're great. And I, I come up and like scoot an arm through hers and kind of like pull them both along. <laughs> she turns to you and this is the look on her face. <laughs> okay oh <my> God. <laughs> uh, what kind of what kind of money are we looking to spend to outfit nether in adult clothes that are very simple not elegant and more well money's melan no melancholy <laughs> I mean, you Probably. could buy common clothing. But then also Sarayan really feels like she has put her foot in her mouth because she is learning when she is being obtuse. <laughs> she realized that she maybe said something not so nice. And so, um, Nether, any, I, I'd be willing to, to help you pay for something if that is something that you want. But if not, I'm not trying to, it would be, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said something that I feel like was rude to you and I didn't mean to be rude to you. I'm sorry. It's it's a it's it's a gesture of apology. It's not necessary, believe it or not. Because your only feeling is sadness, so you're not mad at me. No. Nether suffers from the sad. Oh. Tell me more about that later. Right now, <laughs> the sad. That was not in character. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I um. <laughs> It, it it was difficult before, but I I don't think I was sad. Not really. Lately, I've been sad. Sorry. Just overcome with a deep sense of loss. But it's strange because I only feel like I've gained things been through a big change i mean i have been feeling kind of like i've been lost and sad here and i've only gained experience but i definitely feel lost and sad you're away from home for the first time aren't you yeah it's i just funny. thought i was more prepared it's funny that you meant to mention touching things that's that's how i knew this place by touch and sound and in my mind, I had made it so beautiful. I thought this, and she sort of holds out the netting. I thought this was beautiful. But it it's not. Now that I... Now that I have broadened my perceptions... I, think it's I see beautiful. how ugly it is and how ugly all of this is. How small and petty life here is. Well, isn't it nice that you have a boat you can go on and you don't have to stay here? Well, that's just it, though. I think I want to stay here. But I want to make it beautiful. Well, that's a lovely aspiration. You can get Is behind it? that. I don't know. I suppose we'll find out. Hmm. Yeah. So, so Nether, just so you know, as you guys are browsing around having this conversation between different shops and kind of around the bridge and the markets, you could get just really plain regular clothes uh, regular dress for about si five silver pieces. Um, if you want something a little more sturdy, that's going to hold up to kind of what you do, um, more like traveling clothes that can Swamp handle clothes. some work, you're talking two gold pieces. Two gold so. pieces. I think I can cover that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, thank, thank you, Saray, and I've got um, this. I also buy a oh, uh, linen shirt to replace the one that I left to go to the ocean. <laughs> Thank <Gotcha>. you. Uh, 
Um, um, and oh, so sorry. Uh, and while we're looking, we're doing this. I am looking out for any sort of place where I think I can get something gilded. Um, Peter, I'm also on the lookout for. Um, think like uh, small trinkets or other things that could be added to like a charm necklace. Okay. Um, what there might be. <laughs> So, you can find, so this, for both of you, um, some of the, especially in the market, some of the dwarves have set up, um, well, just little market stalls uh, selling their own wares. You can easily find someone who sells little trinkets, some of them for children, some of them likely to be put on a necklace or something like that. Um you can certainly find someone selling that. Now they're for gilded things, um, mostly marketing towards the most elite of salt marsh. You're you're more gonna look at, um, I guess, uh, uh, well, for lack of a better term, silverware or um, or you know, like china items. So you can find maybe a gold. Um, plated a gilded bowl or something like that with some little some filigree and on it or such or some very fine silverware or platters and such i will ask this person who sells this or anyone else i see that might seem likely if they can apply gilding to this lily this flower 300 um, golds worth to be precise so that I can have a gilded flower worth 300 golds worth to use to summon Fae. Uh, and it's solid, like frozen solid, or is it? It's, I, mean, I, I froze it to just sort of keep it, so it helped it keep its shape while it was, while it was uh, in right. the pack. Well, so they don't actually want to gold plate this just to create a gilded gilded flower worth uh, 300 gold pieces right so i don't know if that's something they have for sale or something they if they can find one that looks like this flower or if they can d dry this flower and do it for this one um the dwarf will tell you to come back um they say and they start to close up shop at the that hearing that price and kind of thinking about you see them actually open up a chest they have to the side looking to their tools and they pick out a couple golden bars um what looks to be almost like gold leaf and some other things some jewels and they seem to have the raw materials and tell you to come back and about a about a day maybe two and they'll have it ready for you oh um, right but ask they do ask for um um, they actually draw out a contract. My, it's got this miners guild stamp on it and everything for um, uh, deposit requested for customers. Contracts. Uh, yes. Yes. Cool. <laughs> She'll ask fifty gold up front. Fifty gold. Yes. Okay. Got it. Sarayan. So is she still with? Like nether, or have they all? Kind I of imagine like gone everyone's off kind of just there. The market there, like I said, there are some very like fine boost. shops on the bridge yeah. itself, but it just kind of spills down, and so you can kind of part ways, but then you can easily see oh, nether's browsing the jewelry over there. So yeah, you guys are together. Okay, so um, are there any stalls nearby that are selling like journals or like quills and ink? Yeah, easy enough to find. Great. So Sarayan would go to one of those and try to find like the equivalent of like gel pins. Oh my god. <laughs> but really, I just like she wants to have color like, ink. Yeah, well she wants to start color coding her notes. I so fucking she has love them you. collated and look, she knows. Look, look, where it's washi is. tape. There's washi tape over oh, there. Like, where? <laughs> Amazing. So you, Nelvin already you, does that. That's the funny part about that. Oh my because God. he can change looking the around, ink in his quill. Yeah, you're looking around a uh, Saran and you see this one um, uh, stand that has um, 
some symbol on it, and then there are uh, rolls of paper and such, and then a um, robed gnome stands on a stool behind it, um, and he has a bunch of different things for sale. And you see what look to be vials of bright, fluorescent, almost glowing ink in um, in a little uh, a little tube tray, sort of. Sarayan clunks up to the counter. <laughs> oh, well, look at you! Uh, look! Look at me! Don't rain on our parade! <laughs> Don't rain on my yourself, parade! Uh, <laughs> fancy yourself a scroll scribe now? You would like some fine inks for the crafting of, well, these wares? Or is it the scrolls you need? Um, so, I am here to learn about the above ground world, and I'm finding out so many new and exciting things um, that writing in one ink, it's going to be really hard when I get back down to put everything together into, anyways, I don't need to go into it, but yes. You I've really led... just did, so, but anyway. Uh, um, also, what are you? What am I? Yeah, you're very small. What am I? What are you? I'm a Triton. I knew that. Oh. You really don't know what I am. I mean, I've, I've heard you. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend. Uh, no, I'm I didn't dra- mean to offend. No, 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 no. I it's okay. I seem to be uh, doing uh, that uh, a lot lately. Uh, 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 I'm a dragon. <gasps> no, you're not. Shh, shh, shh. I, I know secret. better than that. No, 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 large and have scales she looks down pointedly at the gnome on the stool <laughs> wow don't you know your abc's abc's ABC. I, I do know ABC's my abc's <laughs> <laughs> don't you know your abc's i do know my abc's <laughs> half of my his face sags on him oh no where's the curry <laughs> no, I'm Please totally joking. Me. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead. All right, I do know my opses. Uh <laughs> Are you a, are you a dwar- are you a dwarf? I'm a gnome. You're a gnome. Of... Now, do you need some ink? You need some <laughs> scrolls? Mm, might as well. Might as well. And she begins drawing the gnome on the stool. Um, around right. now, Melvin pops I've up got right this... behind Serene. Did, did someone I've say scrolls? This... Yeah! I've got this nice travel kit here with all the inks you need. Oh, that looks great. That looks really, really good. Um, Is this okay for my illustration? Sing. Oh... We were okay a second ago. (laughs) I'm not with her. (laughs) Never met her before in my life. (laughs) Are you all gnomes on stools? (laughs) Melvin, Melvin, are all gnomes on stools? Get out of my shop. (laughs) Never return. I think you can... uh... I think you can move along, miss. Whatever you're trying to pull here. Uh, no, I truly don't know. I'm very, I'm very sorry. I really, truly don't know. How much can I pay you? Money is no oh, object. Right. No, oh. You're about to get scalped. <laughs> well, I've got this container here, which is probably much uh, more portable for a uh, uh, hundred gold. Okay. Good deal. Take it. Great. Hands over a hundred gold. I'm sorry to have offended you. Um, I'm you just sorry. made it a little better. Oh, good. And she kind of like bows backwards away from the tent, like apologizing as she goes. You have purchased 50 golds worth of magical ink. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. Did, did you it looks his... amazing. It's beautiful. but I'm sure it is. <laughs> did you say that, that you fell scrolls? Uh, yeah, I can scribe something for you. Oh. What kind of stuff can you scribe? Adjust glasses. Well, 
<laughs> um, what is the, what is it that you need? Uh, I've got uh, a couple things here. I've got, uh, uh, you know, a bit of protection from from some things. I've got some curations. I've got, uh, you know, um, kind of stuff you need when in a, in a pinch. Yeah, I mean, I find myself in those more often than I'd like. Someone after point. you, kid? You sound nervous. Uh, no one's, uh, I don't think anyone's after me right now. Uh, I did meet some kind of mean people recently, though. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, do you, do you have anything for for um, breathing underwater? Um, yeah, that sells really well here. Go figure. Yeah. Um, how how much would you want for that? A uh, scroll of underwater breathing. I am loading myself because I can't find what my spell scroll cost is. Um. Excuse me one moment. Meanwhile, we have a crack and dice giveaway. If you would Yay! like to win, goodness, yes, if you would like to win some store credit to the crack and dice store. Exclamation mark giveaway. We I'm are pretty sure the hype train them. reset. Also, the hype yeah, train is hype also train. up and ready to go as well. So, the higher the hype train, the more we can give away. A level five hype train, for example, will gift a fifty dollar store credit which is amazing. So you can buy all the math rocks that you would like. Ox. In fact, we've already had one hype train happen. We've had one um, hype train, yeah. We, we did immediately. $5 it's total. it's a five? level one, so that's a $5, it was a yeah. So exclamation mark giveaway to enter, guys. We will give away $15 and a $5 one after we're back from the break. And then Fair obviously news. more. It's a haunted $5 gift card. Um, Ooh, on, five gift card. Yeah. On top of that, just so you know, <laughs> those who have won in the last two weeks, obviously, if we do pull your name, you know, apologies, but we will redraw and allow someone else to win. So, please understand much. the kraken must spread its reach far and wide. <laughs> um. So, yeah, the scroll. Uh, 200 gold for water breathing. <laughs> My god, it's Vinny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that, that sounds reasonable. Uh, here you go. Um, what else do you have? What else? What do you need? Well, I, I, I just really like collecting spells. It's kind of a hobby of mine. And flips through spell book, showing lots of pages filled. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, see here, see here. Uh, see here. I've one here, it's my Tommy gun, see? If you can tell me what this one is, I'll give you a discount. Okay. And he kind of spreads this scroll that almost spreads across the entire, it's almost his entire wingspan. Um, in It's in... Um, Eight gnomes, different gnomes types of ink, it seems like, and they're all <laughs> and they're all interlaced. Beautiful wording that sort of um he is a dragon crisscrosses and comes a into really sort of a, a, a uh sort of centrical helix that is just a beautiful um scribe scroll. Uh, it's 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 incredible. Um, oh, it's gorgeous. 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 Uh make an arcana check. Rolling Melvin. my crack and die. I have a 13. I rolled a 3. Oh, boy, baby. <laughs> You're not quite sure what this, this scroll is, but it's, um... The, the the runes make sense, but it's of a higher level than than you have seen, actually. Well, I'm I'm not really sure what it is, but it's it's gorgeous and it looks powerful. It's my pride and joy. What does it I do? finally find a wizard who can cast it. It's going to make my retirement. He kind of rolls up the scroll again. 
So, uh, what is it that you need? Um, well, I was thinking about something that would let me um, put messages up in the sky. Uh, my friends and I re recently acquired a ship and have been traveling a bit, and it seemed like an easy way to keep in touch over long distances. That is uh, one complicated letter. Or not very private either, but um, I could look into that. I think there's a spell like that somewhere. Yeah. Um, I also got fly. I could make you fly. That's a popular one. Ooh. Just uh, yeah, that keep is an eye a... on, keep, you know, stay aware of how long it's lasts and don't get carried away. Yeah. How much would that be? Uh, and it's a fly, same price, 200 gold. Okay. Um, do you also sell a uh, specialty paper? Well, of course. Great. Um, could I could I buy some as well? Yeah. How how, how much for a, a sheaf of a hundred pages? Are you buying this for actual scribing? Uh, for for context, this would be for um the material cost of scribing spells into my book. Um, okay. I don't have you, to buy in ink, that case, but I do need to spend the gold somehow still. So Yeah, in that case, just spend however much you think yeah. you need. and That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Um, well, th thank you so much, and I might be coming back when I get a little more powerful to check out that scroll again, because that was gorgeous. You don't think oh, that, uh, you don't think I offended that uh, Triton over there, did you? do you? Um, She's really big, and I just, uh, I didn't notice at first, but as she started walking away, I saw that sword, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> she's she's pretty nice, but she's just kind of uh, oblivious sometimes, so. Oh, yeah, I got that. Yeah. I'm sorry if she offended you. That's nah, all good. I basically yeah. ripped her off on that uh, ink or whatever, but uh, I, I I'm getting out of town, uh, heading up to Water Deep anyway, so. Oh, you'll you'll be in Waterdeep next. So, um, when I do get more powerful, I should look for you there. Oh, when do you get more? Oh, kids these days. Yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> See, okay. Find me in Waterdeep. That was a cool scroll. So I I want to check it out again sometime. Okay. What was your name? Archie. <laughs> <laughs> Archie Nimble Knuckles. Walking. <laughs> Nimble Knuckles thing. I love that. Nimble Knuckles inks. <laughs> Amazing. Well, have a nice day. And I'll, I'll mark off those costs. Ciao. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Ciao. I love this so much. All right. You want to buy some scrolls? Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Peter, I'm I'm hoping in my little charm search that I might find something vaguely resembling a pixie. Yes, that would be um the one you find is maybe a little diminutive, something someone might give to a daughter or something, and it's likely yeah. pewter, maybe brushed silver on you yeah. know on it, but uh but okay. yeah, you can find that. Um yeah. so I pick gold that up. piece. Um so it's, yeah. cool beans. Um, uh, and then uh, is there a, um, where do, where do armaments live? Um, sorry, that was a weird way to put that. Where does one find armaments in this town? <laughs> so. I'm just kind of curiosity. Um, basic weapons can be bought that's pretty normal uh martial weapons usually you have to purchase them from the town blacksmith and it's not okay. something just anyone so that, it can wouldn't do be for like... security purposes but you guys for the player's handbook costs can right. buy any martial or simple mm -hmm. weapon here easily um i think at at some point um as we're kind of milling around our various places where shopping is to be had i'll um kind of drag Prion along in that direction. Um, just kind of look at some of what's been previously made. 
Um, you were already wearing your armor, correct? I am, yeah. Yeah. Do you like what he did with that? Aye, I do. Yeah. His armor's very old-fashioned, but it's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Function over over beauty. <laughs> yeah. Aye, he works. It's a... I mean, if you really wanted somewhere. to get a fancy, you could. <laughs> You're not going to be wearing this stuff, are you? What? You're not looking to buy some of this, are you? Armor, no. I, I, I had a hankering to see some swords. I, huh. I know. Everyone getting up into the face of things lately and me sitting in the back taking pot shots. I don't know. It's I've never had the pleasure itch, of using a sword. But... I've never had the pleasure of using a sword. Uh, I used to have a really nice one. Not not this kind of sword. I've kind of gestured towards some of the kind of basic long swords. Um, it's a little, little lighter. More of a, you know, stick them with the pointy end type thing rather than a, I'm going to slash your face off. So, uh, but I uh, was in a tight spot a while back and had to pawn it off kind of miss it i've got no idea to what to spend my money on well there's always alcohol do. obviously i was looking to do my business but they've already said it's a lot harder to do that here yeah i don't know you might maybe check in with some of the you know Trader folk. See if there's anyone who can get you an in. Not an in, like I N N I N. Fucking. It's not so much that as well. Do you not find this place is a bit? I don't know. I'm. I came here. A bit wet behind the ears, and I was looking to to make something of myself here. I'm kind of thinking this isn't my place here. It's not exactly friendly, is it? It's crooked. You make a fair point, but I think you might be treating yourself a little harshly. Not not in the wet behind the ears because you totally were, but you know, there might be something here that's worth doing with your kind of mindset. It's kind of refreshing. I've been around the block one too many times and I, I don't know. It's nice to see someone who actually like thinks that there's some good shit around here. Hopes that's, for the best. That's another thing as well. Obviously, I came here to settle down and to have my own fishes business. But I kind of like what I'm doing, Mariah. It's exhilarating. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'm a little bit too young to start up a business just yet. I don't think there's anything wrong with you running around seeking some adventure. It's um, what I've been doing and I haven't stopped yet. So hasn't killed me yet either. That still leaves me in a bit of a predicament. I don't know what to do with the money. I mean, I've got nice armor. I think that unless there's something that you really want right now, and aside from setting aside your 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 party funds, not the group party, your your like your party party, like it's time to have fun party. Um, aside from that. Save it. There's nothing wrong with holding on to it for something that's real special. True. It is heavy, though. Yeah. My pockets are very jangly. I should probably do something about that. I wonder if there's... I probably shouldn't carry all around, <laughs> around with me at all times. <laughs> Someone might steal it. <laughs> anyway. Well. 
are you so are you actually going to um shop or, or was that just sort of you guys going to the blacksmith to look at the swords i was kind of just okay. yeah. i mean not I just see if he's got anything just, nice yeah yeah the the blacksmith will have just basic just wares basics. he's yeah. quite busy especially the Solmore, the new Solmore um guard quote unquote are keeping him quite busy uh, ah. repairs and such and uh, the blacksmith is on the edge of town you even see another company that seems to be um walking in from out of town another five oh, soul more guards seem to be making their way into town um the first one pointing out and you can overhear them briefly sort of pointing out landmarks and getting directions finding the way to the soul more house so it seems five more of these personal guards have made their way here just doesn't strike you as a little odd Rian. and at this point you see vastly more the of these soul war mercenaries than mm -hmm. the town guard mm -hmm. don't we have some of them on our boat we have you did so your original skeleton crew was five mercenaries who you paid for um paid Scarin for and once you got back to town it was done and uh they went on their way um and you hired your right. actual crew got it mm. it's a little concerning yes so now at this point there's been talk there's been rumor of what happened last night but most people are kind of dying down um as you all reunite it's just taken the first part of the morning to do this but as a reminder um the things you had heard before the growing threat to the sea in the sea had been sort of the next step against the Sahuigan or why they were coming was sort of unknown and the um the ba what you had heard about the Thalassic League or the group around the ritual you found mm -hmm. on the boat seemed to be threatening to overtake Salt Marsh itself to repay an un, um, un uh, uh, basically a dishonored debt. So that's kind of where you're at at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, leave it up to you guys where you want to go next. I've heard some ideas previously. Well, I know um, that, that um, didn't um, uh, Melvin say he wanted to check out the tower? The wizard. There, there is a tower that I wanted to check out. A tower, and I don't believe it's actually in town, just outside of town. Just outside of town, yeah. yes. Just outside. Well, that sounds as, fun. Do, as we gather, you can head there. Um, Melvin... You do have the um, researcher background, yes? Yes, I do. Um, the more hidden information, the more um, detailed information about these sort of things, especially if this had taken place in Salt Marsh. Um, if not, the location of the information, this tower is probably the next step, you would think, um, based on your background. Um, it's it's not a keep thousands of years of records type of town but as you know oftentimes the towers the wizards the occupants their logs their the books they keep tend to tell a much more comprehensive history of the goings on of these very um uh, fast changing little towns along the sword coast so heading to the wizard's tower i think that's we'll, we'll take a break before we go there mm -hmm. and then um we'll <clears throat> pick up as you guys move through town and then go to the tower right yeah. so welcome back everyone uh the group here has spent a little bit of time shopping and sort of trying to debrief and understand exactly what happened with the vampire attack but as far as they can tell as the um vampire has fled there's no way to predict when the next attack will be if the next attack will happen really anytime soon or even will happen if it was truth that the that um Zolek was speaking when he said this would happen again so they decided to wait go shopping a bit and then go to the wizard's tower 
which you are on your way to now, passing through town. Um, and just to the south of town, situated on a lake, is a three-story tower. Have you? Has anyone asked any about it in town? Has anyone asked about this tower or this particular person? Um, I believe I did I before I met the party. But that was it. Okay. Um, was that something that we had covered yet? Yes, you had. You gave me information about that already. Right. So you have mm -hmm. that the information you gave, but you would have noticed in town if you ever brought him up, people would sort of just shy away and just Im turn and sometimes immediately leave the conversation. Um, sometimes making odd gestures to themselves at the name of, well. You know the name is Keledek, but as soon as you say that, people just kind of just make that kind of gesture and walk away. Um, just so you know, if if there's if there's anything you wanted to ask about or prepare for before going there, that would have been your experience in asking people in town about the Wizard's Tower. They're very right. flighty and weird about it. Um, I'm sorry. So I was confused. I was thinking of a different tower, Tower of Xenopus which you also gave me information about. Oh. And that is where I where I was thinking we were going. Is that not where we're going? Up to I you, dude. I don't think so, because sure. that is more of a ruin. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. That's why I was confused by your original description, but that's okay. fine. <laughs> I see. Cool. Now that we're on the same page. Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, so you, you head there and making your way out of town mm -hmm. soon enough situated before you is a idyllic little lake, the mountains rising up on one side, turning into a sort of a steep climb, um, up into the hills next to the coast. And there's this nice little Wizard. pond with a Wizard tower on a lake again, idyllic... huh? What? Wizard Tower on a lake again, huh? Is, is there a cart outside? <laughs> Idyllic yeah. little. Hey, this one's not on the peninsula. Yeah, okay. That he said so far. And there's not a family wading into the water. Oh, good. Great. I was like, is um, a family Contrary nearby? to what you see on the <laughs> image, you do not see that um, down below there. So mm. it has a single door steps leading down down and towards the water and this is what you see standing in front of you well melvin this is uh this is your lead dude so how do you want to how do you want to do this i was, was kind of hoping there'd be a path not a lake mm. is there a boat or something I look around. Is there a boat anywhere? No, make a perception check. Perception. Perception. No, oh, it's a 23. Wow. Damn. You're looking about. You don't see any boats tied up to the side. Nothing like that. But getting up on a rock with a bit more vantage point, looking up and down in the water, you see what seem to be the skeletons of... Maybe half a dozen rowboats sunk just off the edge, sort of rotting there, little fish swimming around them, bits of seaweed beginning to grow on the old bones of these unlucky rowboats. Well, that's encouraging. Like, I can't say I'm really surprised if you're going to build a tower in the middle of a lake, you probably don't want visitors. Right. That might explain why everybody was weird when i brought up his name hmm. weird like oh that's that weird guy that lives over on the lake and you know doesn't talk to people or weird like mm -hmm. we don't touch that shit with a 10-foot pole weird like yeah. making religious signs and then turning away and walking away very quickly without saying anything that might be a little bit more than doesn't like people yeah. are any uh, animals about dm um you make a perception check of your own. Hmm. I will roll the Kraken with no bonuses attached. I have rolled the Kraken. Hey. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. 
All the rest. <laughs> um, Damn it. Is that what I'm doing wrong? Very good. So you see um, there is there are some, some birds flying about, um, some fish, again, in the water, uh, sort of swimming around the, the wreckage and nibbling little bits of seaweed. There is a um, one blackbird sort of sitting up in the tree nearest to you, just kind of cocking its head one way or another, kind of hopping around the branches, looking at you a bit. And then um, it seems it has some shells of some snails or something that it begins knocking against the wood to try to crack open. Hello. Are you using... Um... I'm using Beast Speech. Okay. Interesting. Um, it looks back at you and kind of shakes its head around and then drops a snail from its beak and looks right to left, right to left, looks at all of you, then just kind of flies off and goes around the corner of the tree and just kind of disappears. Well, that was odd. I don't think I said anything offensive. Look for There's another them. animal. <laughs> nope, they're the fish. There's a couple, um, there's a duck sort of paddling through the water. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to know anything about the fellow that mm, lives in that place over there. Tall. That's good. That's good to know. Does he ever take a boat over there? Or I suppose I should ask, have you ever seen a boat? Wood. Lots of wood on the ah! lake. And it dives down under the uh, water for a bit and you see it resurface again and <clears throat> kind of eat some of the seaweed that is just plucked off of the side of the boat. Have you ever mm. seen a boat that doesn't go under the water? Mm-mm. Okay. He goes like I do. And the the duck just kind of turns and just glides across the water towards the tower. All right. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with the water. I think we could just walk across it if we wanted to. Oh, if you have the magic, I guess. Mm. That's a different campaign. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Nobody in this campaign has that spell. Ah. It's your wise crossed. Sorry. So am I going not it... then? You're but, gonna go uh... swim across. I mean, uh, I mean, I'd be careful. I mean, there's a bunch of wrecked boats there. I think we should all go together if we're gonna go. Um, I did just buy a a new thing that I could try out. I could give us the ability to breathe underwater. All of us. Might it be worth first checking whether there's any magic in the immediate vicinity? You know. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, can you not do any magic off. that can knock on the door? Um. <laughs> <laughs> How large is the leak? Um, you're probably about 50 feet from the, uh, uh, shore to the base wow. of the tower. Well, and my, uh, delicate mage hand sort of comes up and pokes Prion on the nose. This only goes 30 feet, so I'm all out of options. Uh, maybe a, a message of some sort? How about we just shout out, hello? No, no, no I, I have a better a better idea in mind, but... Why are we here for again? Magic stuff. Uh, I think that he probably knows more about the stuff that we've been sort of uh, swept up in. Uh, um, you know, the, the league and stuff like that. It's up to you then, Marilyn. Do you want to... 
do you want to ask before we try to cross the lake and get to the tower? Or would you like for us to see if he'll let us in before we make the attempt? Well, it's going to take, take me a minute to uh, to get us ready to cross the lake anyways, so you could do whatever it is you're doing while I prep. All right. And I reach out and I hold on to Mariah. Mm -hmm. I send Dahl flying across the lake looking for someone to speak to. All right. Um, um, Dahl begins to fly and then suddenly you see a um, whoosh, blindingly uh, bright uh, fiery light shoot past where you know Dahl to be. And standing, then revealing itself at the um, top of the tower is a tall man in robes, probably even about eight feet tall, taller than eight feet tall. Oh. Thin robes sort of um, tossing in the wind a bit. And he has this um, very bright red turban. That is quite close enough for your servant. If you earn an audience by crossing the water, we can speak. Not before then. And I will not miss next time. And he Understood. kind of turns and ducks back into the tower. Doll comes flying back and uh, relays what all happened. Well, looks like we're being tested. So we've just got across the water. Evidently. Hmm. Hmm. Go on, yeet yourself in. Uh, eat that Melvin sits Mima. down and starts <laughs> frantically writing into his book, Wait, tra transcribing the two scrolls that he has. Uh, or, uh, the one scroll, rather, water breathing. How long will that take? Two minutes. Um, while we're in that two minute time, Talise would like to go to the, like, as, as close to the edge of the water as she can get, and then try to cast shape water and see if I can create, um, like a little platform. Uh, like out of ice? Yeah. Yeah, like turn the water into a solid platform. Okay. As you cast this cantrip, right? Yeah. The water, especially um, uh, as you uh, where you cast it, the the very surface of the water seems to resist. So you have this five foot area that kind of freezes, maybe a foot on one side and um, a foot on the other. But there's this sort of area almost in a straight line between you and the door at the moment which doesn't freeze and just seems to be regularly rippling water it's strange okay can i i would like to move the platform so that it's no longer in a direct path with me in the doorway so that it's okay like, here's a path of me off to the side and is uh, it still then as you as you freeze yep it freezes a block Five foot by five foot as normal. But there was like got, a there was guys. like a pathway in the water that she could seemed like it. There there was um, like a th three foot um, wide path cut into her block of ice. Uh, could you guys come and look at this for me and tell me if I'm seeing this right? And we'll go mm. swoop back to where it was originally with the gap in the middle. Okay. Right. See, there's like this big dead space where it's water, water. And then I go off to this other side. Now it's solid. Um, and maybe somebody could stand on it. Anybody want to try? I'll do it. Ah, uh, yeah, nay, nay. DM, I want to stand off to the side at an angle and cast Eldritch Blast across the line of the where the water appeared to not 
take to the magic. Okay. Um, across where the water did not take to the magic. So there's the lake, from what I'm understanding. I, I see lake. what you're doing, firing across the bow of that line, kind of. Exactly. Yeah. So as you fire the Eldritch Blast, it whoosh, continues out and off into the distance before it fizzles out beyond its maximum range. It continues right. over. Then and now, Anaris, you're stepping up to the pathway, I heard you say? Yes. On, onto the, when it's off to the side, the piece of the ice when it's not directly in line with the door. When it's the five by five. Okay. And I want to see, like, is it going to be normal when she steps on it, or is there going to so be So she steps else? onto it. She is now on some slippery ice kind of above the um uh above the water standing there Daenerys you feel fine yeah do you feel okay how do you feel <laughs> I feel like this could be some sort of sport where you win medals oh I love medals and then can I I'd like to push the ice block a little bit like manipulate it in the direction of the tower but keeping out of that um lane are you able to do that with shape water? Yes. Oh. I, I can pretty much do anything I want with shape water. Anything that's, a, that's an assertion. <laughs> I can I can help as long you. As, stop. There's nothing, stop. as long as there's Anybody nothing in the water when I manipulate like fish. it. Yeah. Yeah. I can move or change the flow of water. Mm -hmm. I can shift the water into shapes for an hour. I can change the color and opacity. I can freeze the water as long as there's nothing you can in have, it. You can have two of them going at the same time. So you could yeah. actually make some ice that's, stepping stones all the way across. That's exactly what I was going to do. That's what, yeah. that's what we, I, we did that earlier where I had, I had yeah. some platforms. Yeah, I just in, hadn't remember. Combat. I so, can very help you cool. with that, Elise. And I create two as well. Um, hey, DM. Yeah. Um, if I approach this place where Talise has indicated that there's this weird, like, lane situation to the door mm -hmm. um if i mage hand and like put it right into this space where her magic didn't work what happens they basically um, have the mage hand and then just put it forward floats out there in the middle of the path okay and like putting it right through where that area where she was having an issue uh huh. Interesting. What happens if you put it in the water there? Though that that's kind of what my intent is to like occupy exactly the same space where. Okay. The if you pass it down, when you get to the water's edge, it does not pass down beneath the water. I depending. Let me check. Um, one. Hmm. <laughs> Crack and dice, everyone. Interesting. <laughs> Crack and dice. <laughs> the hand does not pass through to the water. It's like you can get down to the water's edge, but something is preventing it from passing through this little strip of um, something from the tower to where you're standing. Uh, take my dagger kind of go up to the edge and kneel down and just kind of poke at the water a little bit <laughs> splashes under your dagger guys this is so weird and so cool <laughs> while yeah, are kind are of you making your way water? across are you are you guys still ferrying Inaris to the middle of the um Don't leave me stranded pond no, no screw her. Someone would come <laughs> right in the middle. And wouldn't leave her. <laughs> uh, I would definitely not leave her. Um, so I had been sort of. I was picturing Talise staying on the land and then pushing Nene out a bit to see how far we could go, and then Prion now, he's doing his own shape water, and Siri is trying to help me shape water. Be quiet, Siri. Um. <laughs> Shape water hopscotch. Mm -hmm. I I think I think that's what's gonna happen. Or like a halfway, maybe we could do like a halfway point. I think that would be better than me just standing on the edge, just going back and forth. Yeah, I mean, see if it works. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, if, I, if I die, Anaris has a twin sister named Anair. We. Anair bear. Anair we. Bear bear. An air bear. And she hates bridges. Air bear. <laughs> and I she hate, hates, bridges. hates bridges. So, so it sounds friendly, like though. you are creating those stepping stones for her going out. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, uh, in mine ours. aren't stepping stones. Mine's like one platform, very much like Mario side side scroller. Would you like me to go instead, Inaris? I, I don't right. know if you I just don't know that you have. I so I, I see in the um, description about freezing multiple. I don't see where you can move that block of ice, or unless you unless I'm missing that. So it needs to be stepping stones, like freeze it, not. If, if I'm misunderstanding have, it, just let me know. I just, uh, yeah. I thought I could, because it says that you can have two effects active at a time, I thought I could create the block and then manipulate the water underneath yeah, to move it. That's a good point. Yep, I would say that works. So, yeah. Anaris is standing on the block, and then it just does That's sort of flow out <laughs> on your little iceberg, and then a little narwhal pops up and says... Goodbye, oh. Neris. <laughs> Hope you find your dad. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, as that, you is, get about, you see as she gets about halfway out, it <laughs> slams to a stop. And oh, out jail. of the water <laughs> emerge three massive looking <gasps> water elves. Or sea oh. elves. Spears at the ready, hands outstretched. But they all look identical, and they stand to you. And this booming voice in Elvish rings out. Malenti! Uh, by the way, this is in Elvish. So, Malenti have infiltrated our homes in the past. Were you worthy of our treasures, you should be able to identify one if it was between the subspects of an attack. If it was between... Excuse me. If it was a suspect of an assassination crime, find the liar, as it is certainly the killer. Shall you make the wrong choice? Consequences shall be upon you. Well, dude, I'm gonna need that in writing. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't speak this. Boy, I think it's a logic I do, puzzle. I do. Yeah, I, I it sounded like a like a writing. puzzle to me. It totally did. Yeah. It. It definitely. What's it was I've been writing day. sonnets, so I didn't write it down. <laughs> we, we need to find the liar. is is the uh, short version. Uh, right. yeah, we need, say we need to find puzzle. the I see, I see right the one that is not <laughs> that is not like the others, but was, was, was something about an assassination attempt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, from my notes, what are yeah, the does anybody know? Oh, the the Malenti are the the Sahuagin that look like sea elves. Yeah, oh, and uh, right, right, right. That's if right. one of them is, you know, does an assassination, you have to be able to figure out which one. So we have to catch them in a lie, basically. One of them will lie, and presumably the other two will tell the truth. Oh, uh, two truths and a lie. Oh, I know you said three, but um, there's four on screen. The the other one's the wizard. No, I see four. No, CEOs. there's four. There's a did one. I four. say three. You did yeah. say three. You did say three. There are four. There are four oh, that I popped up. Four. So yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, so this is this is screaming. how far out on the water? She's about halfway. So let's okay. say twenty five mm -hmm. feet. Uh, I'll I'll give Nene the Cliff Notes version. Well, go for it, Anaris. You're up. Oh. So, but but she can't but she can't ask them for for help because she doesn't speak it. Um, um, pre, you don't speak on. Elvish. She speaks Drow. Under I mean, it's, okay. it, uh, I was like, of the two of us, says, I'm the one that speaks Elvish. Yeah, it says Elvish, but I feel like that would be cheating if I said she could just speak Elvish and she's Drow. Do you, do you Which is personally mean that to be undercommon? I mm -hmm. think is Elvish, Elvish and are Elvish and Drow the same language? Actually, Elvish and Drow know. are the same. Uh, well, I think it can be. It's Undercommon is obviously a different language as well, which is Undercommon yeah. a different language. So you have yeah. Drow, Elvish, Undercommon, so, and three of us speak. So Drow is separate right? language as well. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Drow is a spec, separate language. Yes. Me, okay. Brian, Four of us. You. Although yeah. I don't know. Five of us. It, it, I think it depends on different different editions. 
I think you oh. could say that Drow is just a dialect of Elvish. I mean, it, it, it up to up to Nene. I mean, whatever chill. doesn't get me killed because this wig wasn't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we say? Uh, it, Practical. Yeah, up to you. Up it. to you. Is Drow a, <laughs> a sub, is Drow a dialect of Elvish? I would say for the purposes of this, um, it may be difficult to. Um, you would never pass for a native, but you can understand well enough what they are saying. I'll, I'll take it. Because to be fair, sea elf would probably be very different from elvish, but we are calling this elvish. So I'll take so it. Good. Zero complaints. Am I am I allowed to ask you questions? They a- all this the. the giant sort of statuesque elves all just look at you because i'm not i'm not psychic this is bullshit you know (laughs) you're about 10 feet from any one of them any of the four they stand Uh, each probably about 10 feet tall the investigation (laughs) sure which one uh the cute one (laughs) <laughs> ha ha. B. Uh-huh. B. All right. So you He's back on shore. Um you approach and as soon as you step closer to B, you hear it speak aloud in elvish. D is known for never telling lies and then it goes still again. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes i love this shit okay. i hate these i feel like i'm trapped in a labyrinth i hate this <laughs> all right then i will i will back up and i will go straight to d <laughs> yeah, <you're okay. laughs> shut up <laughs> as you approach oh, no. <laughs> i'm gonna approach d you guys this is um, a family show it's, it's can, it actually it's actually says on our really website not. that this is an adult it's program. Definitely not. Thank um, God. Thank God. <laughs> we would never invite That's children to a lie. family show. That's um, true. <laughs> and as you actually approach the first one, um, Nene, a giant dagger <laughs> drops at your feet. Um, it's ornate of elvish make. And looking towards all of these sort of statuesque figures, each of them has a sort of um opening in their neck like a coin slot well that's how you make your selection (laughs) i never wanted to stab anybody in the neck and as you approach d you hear it say no a no better okay was acting very suspicious right before we were noticed right before we noticed the crime sorry this is odd how it was written i'm pretty sure a did it but we know better than to trust d but D never tells lies. D always lies. Um, I'm gonna go to A. A. All right. A, A says C was with me when the assassination happened, so he can't be the culprit. That's sus. When the assassination happened. Well, where were you when the assassination happened? And I'm going to walk over to see. Your turn. I was accomplishing a very important task at the time, which makes me innocent. D is definitely the assassin. But D doesn't tell lies. And he said he didn't do it. No, he didn't. Well, he said A did it. Well, that if he, he said, if, pretty sure A did it. But if he did it, then that's telling a lie, isn't it? Because he knows A didn't do it. Because he did it. Only if he knows that he did it. Oh my God, I don't think it's that deep. <laughs> no, that you know that we know that he knows that. He so knows he's that. actually <laughs> a sleeper <laughs> agent. <laughs> it's a trick question. The answer is G. Obviously. <laughs> really, I thought it was F. <laughs> we're, we're not oh trying to figure out who did it though we're just trying to figure out which one is lying who's lying yeah publishing a very... and then i just stick the dagger in their neck when i pick the one i think put it in the neck hole yes oh. <laughs> I think it's B. Uh, d 
D is known for never ever telling lies. You know who is good at this is Samus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Samus in chat. Well, D, D says, I was acting very suspicious before we noticed the crime. So who was he with? A was acting suspicious right before we noticed the crime. C. The so A was we... with C. Yeah, I was going to say that, that it's possible that that's just a, like a generalization. Yeah. Like the before the crime was noticed, as opposed to I was with someone. Yeah. Who were they with? So, uh, yeah. B? Um, well, can, I, can Wait, you... Wait, it says find Just the liar case... as it surely is the killer. So we are looking for the killer because then that would also be the liar. Just in case, um, Nene, can, uh, can you just... It investigate the statues and see if there are any other clues maybe visual cues that might be involved here i wanted to make sure that we're acting on all available information do you do you want to sing me a song that would like hype me up and you know maybe almost before i <laughs> you're so fucking cool and i really like you and your hair <laughs> oh, there it is thanks is that inspiration yeah <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, don't, so don't, don't, don't guys, I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Um, oh, so so we are looking for the killer because it says that the liar is the killer. Well, so I, 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 I want to invest if we could figure out a. one. A was acting. Oh. D is known for never telling lies. I want to investigate B. Or can you just investigate all of the statues? I don't know if Peter will let me do that. Well, he's had it out for me off the for a side while. of while. You would like <gasps> to investigate it? He's gonna know. Yeah. Why do you I have to say it funny. like that? Jeez, Liz, you're still going. Oh, like, are you like really what? helping me? Like, I'm gonna know exactly what's happening in this campaign from now on forever. Peter, why are you, why are you oh. talking with an upward inflection? You're scaring you me. You may investigate Stop it. if you'd like. <laughs> Like, it's like making my skin crawl. Like, <laughs> oh God! I'm oh gonna. God, why? I'm gonna. I'm gonna approach it and just sort of not touch it, but just look. Do I see anything? Like, sure, make an investigation check. Blood they have to be all identical. I don't know. It's gotta be something. Investigation, come on, please. God damn it! I don't want to waste my inspiration on that. That's fair. So clearly they all are totally fine and look the same with a nine. Okay, so Five. they look no, that's a nine. exactly the same to you. <laughs> oh god. C was with me when the assassination happened. How does but A doesn't... how does A know when the assassination happened? I don't think C can be telling the truth. Because I think it's I think it's A and C are the no, I think C is 50, the liar 50. because if C is telling the truth, then D is the assassin. Yes. And yeah. then D would be the liar, but that would make mm -hmm. B a liar as well. I was that's and they exactly can't what both I was. And be liars. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So too. C cannot be telling the truth for any of the other statements to make sense. And if there's, and there has to be only be one liar. liar. Yeah. There's, there's one only liar, one liar, and the liar is the killer. Yeah. So A or C? So we think C. Dab C in the neck. Yeah. Okay, I'm we're, gonna... we're not we're not playing two two suspects two two killer game. <laughs> two sus. So just, only one killer. Just makes sense. I, like I stand by. Well, that run through it one more time. Run yeah. through so, it one more so time. So if C is telling the truth, then D is the assassin, but that would make D the liar, which mm. means B cannot be telling the truth. So if C is telling the truth. Both B and D must be liars. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. Which makes C the liar. Okay. Just that in case, sense? I'm gonna I'm gonna get but ready isn't, to like pull. A doesn't that out. isn't that it? How how does that um jive with A? Yeah, David, because just how, walk do, through it. how do they know yeah. when the assassination happened? Like exactly when? I 
it's not d- d- don't the, th- those that, details that's not the aren't logic. Gonna... those details aren't going to help us it's, yeah, it's a they, matter they don't figuring out if all of these statements one of these statements cannot be true so that means it's like uh it's it's like it's it's a version of the riddle where like you have i always tell the truth i always lie you have to ask the person what would the okay. other person say that sort of thing it's a, mm-hmm. a logic puzzle it's not we're not going to find it in the details it's the labyrinth door all over exactly yeah the c logic definitely makes sense to me i support that but just in case i'm going to get ready to if we, if we pull back, simplify it we can just say a is claiming that c is innocent b is claiming that d is innocent d is claiming that a is guilty c is claiming that d is guilty right yeah it says d is definitely the assassin no or did i miss mess something up there well d is definitely not the assassin so well, I was just reading the the comment where it says D is definitely the assassin. So who said that? C said that. Not C Z. Said. C. 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 Yeah. C. C. The oh. number C. The I'm number C. Good the God. number C. <laughs> if, if B's lying, because that's the only thing. Oh, he's saying. Jade, can you zoom out a little bit so people can read it a little easier on the stream, or just actually just scroll down a little so that it yeah. And and zoom out because A is hidden oh, by our yeah. overlay over, overlay a little bit. Sorry guys, um, and then shift it to the right just to right. just a skosh. A skosh. There you go. I love that word. Perfect. <sighs> oh God, I hate these kind of things. I love them, but I hate them. Mm-hmm. That's, that's why uh, Prion's okay. just sitting there relaxing. So... I know, I'm just I'm like I'm getting like middle school flashbacks of like logic charts. I stuff. could um. If you guys want to try to make a check with something... I was about to ask, can I make an intelligence check? To see if my character maybe has a flash of insight that I don't as a player. <laughs> oh, Samus is here, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Samus. Is here. Samus is. <laughs> what are you... Sorry, what do you, what were, check were you asking for? Can I for? make some sort of intelligence check? To yes. see if I have a flash of in, insight a, or something? Gen, a, a straight ability check of intelligence. Yep. On the crack and die, I've rolled a six, which makes that a ten. So probably Woof. not. Um, yeah, it's it, it probably won't with that. It probably won't reveal anything more. So. Yep. Oh. Can that be attempted by others or? Sure. What yeah, is awesome. the roll? Awesome. I've got minus one. <laughs> I know. I'm like I have a minus one. Yeah, no. Oh, I that's so appropriate for the eldritch knight who doesn't know he's an eldritch knight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I rolled a 13 plus 1. 14. So, probably not much to go on. What else am I hearing here? I got a 4. Uh, Nether oh will God. roll one as well. Why not? I got a 13. I'll 14 roll on for the, me. I'll roll on the computer. Intelligence? Oh, I should have used my Kraken dice for that thing. Where did it go? Where did my... Intelligence? Damn it. Uh-huh. Mm. Everybody ignore that. <laughs> I see nothing. This is a what is this a straight intelligence check you said? Yep. All right. Boom. Dirty twenty. Nice. Twenty. Ooh. Wow. Nether. You've heard a lot of half truths in your time. And you think that with lies and truths. You need to look into the concrete language, maybe, in order to determine what is true or false. What is, you know, the truth of a statement and the concreteness of the language can be tied together at times. Well, if that's the case, then the only one who is not certain in what they say is D. Everyone mm-hmm. else states facts. D right. is pretty sure. How does that jive with B saying that and D never, never tells ever lies? Ever telling lies. <laughs> um, it's not a lie. I mean, 
A could do it. C could have been there with A yeah. and A could have still done it. Yeah. Yeah. No one says that C is innocent. Like no one outright says it. Right, that C didn't do it. A yeah. does say that. A says that. Well, does it hey, say- you know who's literate at a late night on a Friday after a long work day? <laughs> well, <Not> wait, <laughs> so- <laughs> Beep, boop, pop. Beep, boop, pop. Beep, boop, pop. It really helps me cogitate. Hey, you know what I was actually trying to say? Uh, I was actually trying to say, yeah, A did it because nobody says that A didn't do it. That's the letter I was trying to go with. I said A, but- <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah but no, around but not every, J not everyone. Just name every letter in turn. <laughs> not everyone is exonerated. Like some people are saying that this other person did do it, and some other people are saying this other person didn't do it. Like it, there's not really equity in the accusation or exoneration. So A says, if if the clue that that Nether understood is true, A says all facts c was with me when they assassinated. it can't be the culprit definite d is known for never telling lies there's no no uncertainty there c i was accomplishing a very important task d is definitely the assassin no uncertainty a was acting very suspicious right before we noticed the crime that is not necessarily false maybe a was acting suspicious i'm pretty sure a did it that is not a certain statement. So if the clue that we got from the DM is to be believed, then D is the one that we need to kill because that's the only one that has said anything that is not 100% factual, at least stated factually. I have to say too, there is one flaw in the logic at this point. Something doesn't quite sit right with you. And it's based completely on the language. come here and read this <laughs> well i mean i feel come like on. it's come here quick <laughs> it's important <laughs> are we allowed to bring spouses into this I, he's like, I, I, mine's already here so i know well that's you guys yeah. are different <laughs> are we allowed to bring yeah, spouses okay. not in the campaign <laughs> there's also i don't know like isn't the I, I think it's odd whenever, but this is probably not it, but it's like anytime someone says like speaks in like they Samus never has ever a hint tell. For us. See, like, okay, the, the other the other thing that's odd is that A, B, and D all begin with a letter and C B? does not. A says something about C. Is B says B says something about D. D that's not a hint to, that's a good hint, I'm Samus. Gonna die. I'm gonna yeah. die. I'm gonna die. For there to oh. only be one, doubt, only choose one specific choice for the assassin. Interesting. Which I think was what we were talking about earlier. Well, wasn't? then if there's only one, yeah, specific choice listed, then wouldn't it be... Oh. Wouldn't it be then D? The one liar. Wouldn't that make B a liar? He says B I was going to say that would make... Because we know that the killer is a liar. We're told that. And they're Find the only the liar, liar. And it is the killer. The liar and the killer are one and the same. That's what we're told. That's the rule. Yeah. I was going to say, or that's the lie. <laughs> How deep does this go? I mean, I do think that is a lie. It's like, that's... I mean, who never, ever tells a lie. Um, okay. I, I, I'm a little bit... I know we're not, we're not trying to get hung up on like situational details. Um, does anyone think that the this issue of like I was accomplishing a very important task at the time, blah blah blah, like, oh okay, does so, that seem a little weird? So the yes. other person does. That was the first thing that like my stood out to me because uh, and a very important task could be an assassination. Mm -hmm. Samus, I can't reverse engineer the puzzle. I'm thick. <laughs> <laughs> Prion is stupid, which is why Jade plays oh stupid God. characters. Stop. Apart You're from when I play a mute wizard. Yes. Oh yes, well, my, I mean, Sam is suggesting is the reason I can't figure this Stop, out. Jade. Is, is right. Sam, Sam is suggesting pick one and then just what I play it out earlier? Yeah. Yes. Right. It could be. Hey Sam, if you so want to slide into my DMs, send me the mat, like the correct one, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> if B is lying, does that make anyone else a liar? Or yeah, if B is lying, does that make anyone else a liar? Nobody um, el nobody else references B at all. Yeah, that is a little sus. Prion gets out of picnic and starts eating. <laughs> I know, I was like, get the negative one people just to sit down and enjoy the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yes. All right. I'm D so is <laughs> true. B says that D is true. Then that means... I know I have to get a logic chart, you guys. D is pretty sure A did it. I still feel like that doesn't help us read if, if, i i will say that one because of the all right nether read <laughs> number b the statement d is allowed. known for never ever telling lies so is b right lying? what does that mean that statement it means that people know that d never ever tells lies or it means that d's never been caught telling a lie Known for never, ever that could be lies. true, and D could still be a liar. That seems deeper than like a basic D is known. problem solving knowledge, like logic check. I think I feel like, but if if D is known for never ever telling lies, then that's like D. I would think that D would be like. The that would that make would it so after. that D could be the assassin without making anyone else a liar then. Right. Because if D is known for never ever telling lies, then what D says could be true. What C says could be true. And what A says... Well, no, so, uh, do a D, C, C says D is definitely the assassin with nothing to back it up. There's... So if B... B statement... Is if that if that's correct, and then we believe D, A was acting suspicious before the crime. A doesn't actually exonerate himself; he exonerates C. Yeah. Why, why do we have to believe D? I will say no pressure, but um, Samus oh sent God. me the correct answer in a Facebook message no! just a second ago. I, I, I'm, Samus, I'm I think if... you hit the wrong name. I think you meant mine. Yeah, no. I think you meant all of ours. <laughs> I know you got confused. If, if B is actually telling the Liz, truth L and, and, nobody, are pretty close and to the D alphabet. is known for never telling lies, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that D is not telling a lie in this instance. Yeah, it just but that's, means that that's, not, that's not actionable information, though. But it is because it, it doesn't make B a liar if D is lying in this situation. It's true. D is known for never, ever telling lies. It does not mean that D is not lying. A was acting very suspicious the night before we noticed the crime. I'm pretty sure A did it. But. And then everybody else's statements can still be true. A can be telling the truth that C is not the culprit. C can be telling the truth that D is the assassin. And B can be telling the truth that D has never been known to lie. But. It's true. So C can't be the culprit. Yep, that 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 tracks. That definitely tracks. So you're you're accusing that, that, whom? I missed accusing, some of that. Accusing I'm D. saying D. Yep. Yeah. He was acting. Okay. What can can you <laughs> explain to me why it's not A? Because that's yeah. the direction that my brain is leaning right now. I was still leaning towards A. I said I at the beginning. But, but I suck at these. The the reason uh, is because C can't be telling the truth then. That D right. is the assassin. If if A is the assassin, then C is also lying. If anyone other than D is the assassin, C is someone the liar, else is lying, yeah. which doesn't. Right, so that, that that's that's the other thing. If anybody else but D is the assassin, there need to be two liars. Right. Only be one liar. Mm. Keep thinking. Every time liar. someone says liar, I keep thinking harp. There can Me be too. only one. There can be only one. Do it. Do it. Stab. Stab the. 
from Hell's Heart stab at me. All right, so I guess I'm gonna... a, we all made the decision, right? Nobody was nobody votes. I have I have no better option, so Josie. We just okay. dropped the Melville quote right there. If you die, I'll buy you four D six. Oh. <laughs> who just said from hell's who just said from hell's heart i stab at thee melville yeah yeah okay um, i said who said I the mean, melville quote Con, there and then no one said Con anything Nudian i got excited because it's salt marsh herman melville moby dick anyway sorry. i mean yes but also i would love to take total credit for that but i was thinking like star trek so that's fine oh, oh. Okay, well, <laughs> i love star <laughs> trek <laughs> But honor the source uh, material. Uh, yeah, that's a little. That's a little the bit a field of where we were hoping it was. <laughs> okay, I so know. to the I last, know. I grapple with thee from hell's heart. I stab at thee, and for hate's sake, All I right, spit D, my last breath it. at thee. Okay, All so right. y'all are. Yes. Yes. I love you. <laughs> You're telling me look, look, just look, look, guys, this is Elena's round up Elena's mum. <laughs> this is round up Elena's mum and Streamlabs has muted her. <laughs> okay. Elena's um, mum. What did you say? Are you, like, are right. you stabbing D in the neck? Okay, so they all said pick D for logical reasons. Like I'm picking D just because, because I want to say D. I want to stab right. the D. Stab the dude. <laughs> so Elena's mom's you see the she dagger, went for the D. I'm the going dagger for the D. slides into the neck, and all of this the um spears suddenly point down at you. <gasps> the statues begin to rumble. They rotate inward. Suddenly, the D statue gills flare out from its neck and the other three thrust their spears through it it crumbles to the ground oh. and a clear stone path Amazing. along that um obscure ah. bit of water that you had seen before materializes a clear path to the wizard's oh. tower and you hear a very very slow clap from the top of the tower. <laughs> yeah. Like, damn, you okay. milk that. Oh, God. This is why I have friends, because I would have died. This is, this gonna, is why I love you. I will scooch the platform over so she can get on the path. Well, as long as there are seven of you, I suppose you're fine. Um, Y'all, for the record, apparently my mom like typed, I love Star Trek and hate Moby, Moby Dick. And apparently, <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh Streamlabs is very I've sensitive. Never, I've never read a movie fuck. Streamlabs. Oh, beans. <laughs> oh, Moby Poor Dick is a treasure of American language. Um, oh, someone else got does caught. Your, does your mom know that Streamlabs is a bot? <laughs> oh, mom, mom, Streamlabs isn't a person. Don't worry. Is it not yet? Person. Bum, bum. Well, that yeah. is. This and is my Mikey's favorite getting ever. yelled at too. Bum, bum. Mikey said the D word as well. Oh, dear. <gasps> well, hey, good job. We're smart, all. Uh... You have solved the problem and can now cross to Keladex Tower. Walk, walk, walk. Amazing. Or he will <sighs> be there. Will kind of roll his eyes as he opens the door and said, "And well, none of the others in town have bothered to get it right, or have just run away from the guardians. So, welcome. Why are you here? We just love riddles. <laughs> oh, I have more if you'd like. That's quite all right. Mm. Um, no thanks. Actually, I, I heard my that lunchbox." <laughs> I heard that you were a wizard, um, and I figured you might have some information that um, we might be able to, I don't know, trade for or something. Um, I'm a little bit of a wizard myself. Trade yeah. for? Hmm. Now you're talking. Come upstairs. Winding your way up the tower will bring you to pretty much exactly what you'd expect of a wizard's study. Well, chemical supplies set up on a table in one corner. About half of the wall is a beautiful dark wood built-in bookshelf containing dozens and dozens of dusty tomes, scrolls, 
volumes of forgotten knowledge. There's a no, large look. desk in the center, a crudely built telescope pointing out one wall, a um, bit of maps spread out on another table, a place of study, experimentation, and of magic. That's exciting. My name is Keledek. Sorry, who? <laughs> my, my, my name is Melvin. What's his name? Yes, he is me. about eight feet tall. <clears throat> what was um, his name? Sorry. Keledek. Keledek. Mariah, All ease. Nice to meet you. So, yeah. don't say All ease. Lips. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking, Jade. Okay, good. Come on, kid. Ask him your questions. Oh, oh, okay. Um, so we um, we we uh, found some information that indicates that the Thal checks notes. Uh, the Thalassic League, um, might be involved in something regarding Salt Marsh, and we were hoping that you might have information about them. That old cult. It collapsed with the death of Primewater's father. What? Hello. You've heard of it, of course, right? Some of you have heard of it in other cities. The Thalassic well, League. Heard of it, yes, but everyone not knows details. someone who's in it. Well, it was a thing. I think something like of a trader's agreement or gentleman's club or something. So, so Primewater's dad. Yes. He said. Interesting. He and, well, his father's brother. Um, yes, him and uh, Talon. That's the uncle? Cool. Cool. And what, what did they do exactly? Well, they go by, ta they go by the Chandlers. The ch well... There are ships Chandlers there, the Chandlery shop there in town. Odd folk. Not know if you've ever met them. I will say, Mariah, and anyone who has sort of chartered ship to Saltmarsh, or Nether, just from being around, the Chandlers are a reclusive family, but they own the ship's Chandlery shop. Chandlery shop mm -hmm. being all the little things you buy for a ship that you would only buy for a ship. Things like belaying pins or um, um, I forget the name, but whatever the name is for the pitch soaked twine that you beat between the planks to waterproof a ship. Oakum. Oakum. There you go. Ooh. Nice call. Um, all of that kind of stuff could be found, purchased, services could be procured at a chandlery or even, you know, tables that have little divots for cups and stuff so on heavy seas things don't slide around just basically they are outfitters for ships super cool so um as far as you know f at least recently um they're not um uh you weren't aware of them being related yeah uh, that's weird so. okay interesting um do you know, in more precise terms, what it is they did to oust the Thalassic League? I think it was... I think they just lost interest. I hear that Primewater's mother, well, kicked the uncle out after the death of the father. And, well, he was a right bastard, from what I tell the uncle, Mr. The old... Uh, Chandler, the old Talon. And maybe she just felt left out. I feel rather irritated about their things as well. And he kind of goes and finds a chest that is tucked in a corner, brings it, sets it upon his study table and opens it and brings out a couple old books and some scrolls and some other objects. Uh, they had some sort of code that they would write to one another. I think it had to do with avoiding pirates and such. You see, the Prime Waters, well, 
they lost a ship once about every 25 years for a good portion of their uh, legacy here in Saltmarsh. You realize how incredible that is, right? With it, once with every 25 years. This is the Sword Coast we're talking about. That's... Oh, you, you would expect it to be more often? Absolutely. Much more. Oh. This is unfathomably lucky. Or not luck. Or not luck. That would be fascinating. But I have no idea how to decipher any of this. I have tried and tried researching a thousand years of the history of Salt Marsh. No problem. The Thalassic League and their cults and their inner rituals. I don't know much, but it seems like just a gentleman's club to me. However, their logs, their writings, indecipherable to me, gibberish. As he opens up one of these, two of these books, and they appear just covered in different unrecognizable ruins. Um, ruins? Those mm. runes. God damn it. <laughs> gotcha. Runes. runes. And uh, those of you who speak primordial will notice that they are of the script that would write primordial. However, it is not in any language that you would recognize. You just recognize the letters. Um, Melvin, what, what was that spell that you have that changed it so that the letter that you drafted could only be read by specific people? people is there a way to undo that um, if that well, if like if they were running a, a certain like that? duration it only lasts for a couple days um, right the one that you is, have. i assure you is a generation old yeah, yes it would it would also show up as magical um it's just a little bit of illusion magic oh it is magic at least very slightly i've been unable to dispel it it's uh, uh the language is promoted. not a spell that has created the text something is primordial. Like different. The, Texas, well, yes. yeah. the characters the that alphabet. they use yeah. are primordial. Alphabet. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, because this doesn't it's nonsense. And it's it's not even like fake nonsense. It's it's genuinely just they Is it just a code? It. I thought it was a code, but I've spent a better part of a year trying to decode it and I have had no progress. I mean, Do you think is there there needs to be some sort of Another piece. Is it like Perhaps, red on the water cipher, or something? Maybe? You are welcome to look. I have no idea. Is this why you're here? I'm sorry to disappoint you. Um, there... Oh, sorry, Melvin. Go ahead. Well, I, I had a couple of other questions, if that's all right. He's a sure. sponge for arcane knowledge. I'd like a to look sponge. at these more, though. That's okay. Um, well. I heard that there was another wizard's tower somewhere near here. Um, I think it's in ruins. Um, the Tower of uh, Z Z Zenop Z Zenopus, something like that. Xenopus, yes. Um, I was wondering if you know anything about it. Um, oh, I've gathered everything useful from that ruin. I wouldn't yeah. recommend you go there. If there's anything likely to be there, it's some fiend taking shelter and ready to ambush something else. So it's more of a risk to you than any reward could promise. Well, if there's it's a fiend a there, likely to house vermin, nothing more. If there's a if there's a fiend there, wouldn't that be a threat to Salt Marsh? That's a little far away. Oh, okay. Um. Can and I incite that last statement that he made absolutely. Yeah, about about whether or not it was he, we shouldn't go? I was going sure. to say yeah. exactly the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you you go ahead. I'm not I'm not proficient. Oh, I am. I am. And I'm half suspicious. proficient. Mm. Plus six. Oh, for God's sake, eleven. Apologies, my wife and daughter are playing a I video have a, game. Uh, Fifteen the on that insight check. Sounds like it's going well. Um, I'll throw in with an 18. 
Okay. With my have these proficiency. Yes. Beat my 11. Um, actually, both Prion and um, uh, Mariah, you think that he is being un- untrue about that. He brushes it off too quickly to be mm-hmm. um, believable to you. So, And that, that was specifically the don't go there, it's, it's not worth not your time. That you shouldn't waste your time with okay. the tower. Okay. I kind of just meet Prion's eyes and then... Melvin just keeps going. Yeah. Um, and then one last one. Um, my my mentor back in, in Neverwinter um, sent me down here to look into the, the well, to try to locate the Order of the Stargazers. Supposedly they had a, um, a like headquarters of some sort in the marsh, but no one's ever been able to find it. Um, and then I did a little bit of wandering, but wasn't able to find it myself. And I was wondering if you'd heard anything. Hmm. Interesting. Well, have you ever spent any time trying not to be found, Melvin? No, I've never had anybody looking for me before. Hmm. Well, this is an interesting group. All of you, have you ever spent any time trying not to be found? Sort no. of. <laughs> Maybe. How did that work? Have you been found? Uh, it, not yet. In my case, it was more of a not trying to be found by very specific people and I suppose on a technicality I was found by others well technicalities aside disappearing disappearing entirely is a rare trick so there are those who have likely found such a thing and I can help you with that but I'll need something first let me think Mm. on that Okay. Here I was hoping you came asking for the Thalassic League and had some sort of clue. Just curious. Well, well t- we've encountered some things related to them. It's it's a kind of weirdly amorphous situation where we definitely don't understand everything that's going on, but um I'm trying to kind of unpack it a little more. What about Sounds vampires? like my favorite situations. Now we're off on a different tangent. Ah, um, okay. Oh, there's a we... vampire in town, by the way. Don't we have things that we found on the boat? He, he said his yeah. name was Jolek. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we're not sure. Ah, Jolek. Yes. <laughs> King of Crest. Do you know him? I do not. In do such. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go it ahead. Is my, it is I, Jolek. What? Uh, 17. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, 21. Six, I got 12 altogether. Uh, uh, oh. To all of you, he seems to be telling the truth with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you led into that like he was about to like start ruminating or something. <laughs> I know. I was ready for some deep lore. Nope. Uh, yeah. I know um, such thing. I have a question. <laughs> Or two, actually. Were we to find information about the Thalassic League, would that be worth anything to you? Well, probably. Because it's been a frustration of mine. What would it be worth to you? Well, you spoke about... (coughs) Bless you. Teaching... (laughs) People how to disappear, but that you'd need something. Would you consider information about the Thalassic League, information about Soulmorn, or other people involved, Gellin Primewater, etc.? Would you consider that worthy payment? (laughs) 
Perhaps you've misunderstood me. I'm not offering a chance to disappear. I am offering a path to that which has disappeared. Oh. Which you think would be worth something to us. In return, you'd want something for it. Specifically. Oh, yes, of course. And I'm asking, is information about the Thalassic League, secrets that we might find that you don't possess, would that be worth it? It would interest me what you know and how far you are willing to blackmail the most powerful members of Salt Marsh. Oh, we haven't gotten so far. That's blackmail. where that information is okay. going. Okay. Blackmail. You're talking that... about information. I'm sure you're talking about hidden information. We can all be honest here. I don't think we've gotten so far as blackmail. Nene aside, she has her own ulterior motives. Um, oh, I think let's at this take a point, step back in that case. Fine. Okay. Like I said, this is more about unpacking a situation that we've gotten a little too close for comfort to and would rather know a little more before we dive too far in. Then let me help you. But first... Be clear about what's going on here. You ask me about the Thalassic League, you ask me about a vampire. What exactly is going on? Is there something more to this group that you're not letting on? Well. Just step out and meta a little bit here. Yeah. We didn't actually discuss what we were going to do this thing. Do we have information to give him, correct? We, we do have sort of, yes. We can tell him about the ritual that we mm -hmm. interrupted, the mm -hmm. creatures, the yep. items that were there that were part of that ritual, um, the the names, the, the locations, the names, the locations. Yep, all of that. The You've like portion there's, and stuff like there's that. There's a link between the obelisk and Prime Water as yes. well. Yeah, you Does also saw stone. Prime Water being very much affected by something that looked right. like that. I, that's 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 that. Yeah. Black I also We've have an one. item. Yeah. That is made of that same stone oh, in did my you, pack. Did right you now. take that? I took yeah. it. Yes, I have do, it. Do okay. we do we have any other leads as far as ways to expand upon the information we have on that? To go to the places that are yes. indicated. So to either by our to do that or to just to, to talk with him to find out if he has anything else to give it give us as far as that's concerned. Those yeah. are our two choices. At this stage, yes. Right. Okay. Just checking. So I, I know we're kind of stepping out of that little meta moment, but like, mm -hmm. do people have a preference? Do we want to? I say we need more information and we should get it where we can find it. Uh, DM, Agreed. can I make a general insight check to see how trustworthy Keledek seems based on our conversation? Yes. Cool. I might get above the way I'm I believe wrong. him. <laughs> Researchers, they're always looking out, you know? They're, it's all about the facts. All good. I rolled a nine total. <laughs> I, I'm i personally kind of inclined to tell him that there is something happening, that there is activity that we have encountered, but to maybe not get into the details of the locations that we've... I would show him a Why? sketch of the ritual circle I... that had been drawn. And like where the items were, even if we're not going to show him the items specifically. I don't know, because I'm curious about what he knows. But we don't have to. No, I mean, well, I mean, why? I'm asking, why wouldn't we show him everything that we know? Because we don't know him. We don't necessarily trust him. So it's but if the... Melvin trusts him. Well, <laughs> you well, sweet Melvin. summer child. <laughs> um. Well, I, kind of precisely that I'm not an entirely trusting person, so okay, I'm I'm valid. I'm um I'm interested enough to know what he knows to dangle, but not All like. Right. And we'll probably cap the meta at that. Yeah, okay. that's totally fair. Well, I will kind of look to the group to see if there's any acquiescence of sharing further information before opening my mouth. Go for it, Saran. 
She's, okay. she's busy making poems. She's lost in her puzzles. <laughs> now she's writing more poetry. <laughs> I said the wrong P word. Have you noticed I'm not thinking well tonight? <laughs> yes. You've all just been looking at each other for the past two minutes. Sorry. Uh, would someone like to speak? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, somehow we all have like detect thoughts and shit like that. We've um, all been talking. Where have you been? <laughs> yeah. Um, I previously definitely thought that the Thalassic League was just some bullshit myth. All right. Until a couple oh, days real. ago. I have a bunch of their stuff right on the table. Well, evidently. A um, couple days ago. We um, were sent by uh, Prime Water to go after a ship that had been lost in containing some important documents and other things that he wanted back. It's been lost for about a year, according to the information we had. And on that ship, which we found floating uh, in the water, there was several strange things um a priest of some sort with an octopus wrapped around his head conducting a strange ritual in the hold um as well as an obelisk that had odd persuasive power um melvin do you have that that thing yeah uh, yeah it's um i pull it out and it's wrap still wrapped in that waxed paper um i'll unwrap it and be careful not to touch it but show him it works kind of like a sending stone but uh it tries to force you to connect with it if you stay in contact with it for too long may i and he sort of reaches a hand out and then recoils a moment and then you hear a sound behind him this sort of dripping sound the books behind him are dripping wet. Do you care to come closer, Melvin? And he gestures you towards what's lying on the table. What's up with your bookshelf, man? <laughs> what's lying on the table? Uh, there are a couple just, books set out, a couple scrolls, just this is the stuff um, from a couple the, boxes, the some League things that, that he yeah. says are okay. things that he's recovered. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll come closer to the table with it. As you do that with the stone unturned, you look down and whatever was written there before, the old sort of writing in abyssal has washed away. It has been replaced with perfectly clear text written in common. Hot now, shit. Now, there we go. Well, that's a cool trick. You found a key. It wasn't a not. cipher. It was a lock. I still don't understand why your books are wet. Yeah, a bookshelf? What, um books not really supposed to be wet generally speaking. oh that's fine so and they're just the books on the table that he's taken out the ones that he associated with oh you mean the one for oh one, he, the chest and he okay. takes one of them up <laughs> and sort of um dangles it and the papers seem fine um, okay wax covered um very for sturdy. <laughs> made it sound like all the books on the book yeah you made it so i thought you said yeah. like yeah. the, the whole that's my <laughs> fault a that's my like, fault cool. <laughs> Wait, so to clarify, the yeah. obelisk was a Appar key? Apparently a clarification bit, but... was needed. At least the, the rock that he's brought forth, the piece of obsidian that he's kept wrapped up, seems to Which have... Which was from the obelisk. It was made yeah. of the same, same, material. Material. same material, but yeah, not but part of they, the obelisk. He ripped originally. this from the head okay. of an octopus. Oh, right, right, Prime, right, 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 right. Prime Water's also got one of these stones. Yeah, he, does. Does. he, he has an obelisk yeah. made of the same obsidian at he least uses this. it as a paperweight yeah said it was his father's and his father's before that and and we saw a similar one on the ship that had some weird tentacle monsters like worshiping it and mm -hmm. preon didn't you say that when you went into the room it like tried to speak to you or something i also tried to control to me. me yeah, yeah. may i see this stone sure just 
take care. And he kind of holds out his hand. I'll, I'll put it in so that it's like still on the paper. Okay. He takes it and kind of passes his hand over it. You see some arcane energy beginning to emanate from the hand hovering. And then he quickly withdraws and then kind of... As if it's a hot cooking instrument or something, um, drops it on the table. Straightens his bright red turban. Hmm. And he goes and um, takes a tome off of his um, uh, shelf and starts to piece through it. Um, page through it, looking rapidly, rapidly, and settles on a page, follows some lines with his fingers, and says, I think I know the way to plumb these depths. I need two things. I need the obelisk you mentioned in Prime Waters Mance. And oh I need I need the body of one of these creatures that you pulled the stone from the head from. Or from which you from whose head you pulled the stone from. So so an octopus. No no. Or no, you no, mean like an octopus, an octopus priest? I need one of those transformed beings. Well, the last time we see one of them, there was these huge tentacles that took the ship down with us on it. Oh, I'm quite sure that was the case. But that does not mean there's not more of them. What are Probably we getting in return? Out there. We're unpacking the mystery. This is discovery. We're in this together. Discovery requires experimentation. Um, you know it, where the obelisk is. Yes, for the priest. We do. Things are coming. Things are starting to. Um, things are starting to piece together now. And he picks up that the sort of seeping wet tome that seems to have just mysteriously translated itself in the proximity of the stone, and he flips through it. I suggest you start with. Well, you know where to find the obelisk. I suggest for the priest, start with the Chandlers. Hmm. The card. Look at... Ah. Yes. The clues lie with their dead. And he um, um, slaps the book shut. The water kind of sprays. We... Wow. Finally, the clue to the cipher. Or the key to the lock, as I've said. This is fascinating. I never thought it was something like this. Do you all know... How many of you have elven blood? resistance to to charming effects guard yourselves the voices from below can be absolutely domineering at least that's what it says can you get these things for me is there any way i can help oh, well, prime water is one for a start yeah what about prime water you're asking us to take his stone. Do you have something that could replace it? Or Easy can enough. I do like a bait and switch situation? Yes. It looks like I can this. it looks like something. this and Mether creates a perfect replica. Or she tries to create a perfect replica from what she saw. No, very good. You have grown up fast. 
I don't know what you're talking about. But I do have a question for you of my own. Mm hmm. You said a thousand years of history of salt marsh. Well, as much as I've been able to gather. What do you know about the island in the middle of the bay? What has or what may have gone on there? Well, there are the bones of many a wreck beneath that rock. There have been plans, well, every other generation or so for a couple centuries to build a lighthouse there. At one point, the stones were even hauled out to begin, con begin construction. Never happened. Then came, well, the League, supposedly, and suddenly, after the actions of a few, it became the best fishing village in all Sword Coast. It's as if the fish are drawn there, against their will even. They can't help it. Bizarre, right? Well, Salt Marsh has profited ever since. You said the actions of a few. What, what actions did they take? <laughs> this is just a myth, but... Some elven sages that came by... Well happened to be in town for one reason or another, said that there was something positively revolting about the shark skin or the shark fin bridge. I was gonna ask. And in their studies, they, well, they determined that the personality or the vestiges of a powerful fey entity had been invested into the rocks and surrounding coastline so they thought it was they felt pain fear and anger a will for revenge and they left promptly this is not the type of place that wise elves stick around for very long or at least it wasn't Seems to have gotten rather sleepy recently. It's a fascinating town, isn't it? You can see... Surely you don't judge me for having been holed up here this long, as he gestures to Melvin. Not at all. It's, it's a fascinating place. Seems like there's a lot to Seems no here. one's eyes ever stuck upon it for so long. So much has happened, but so many knots have not been tied together. Oh. You may have just turned these threads into a net. I wonder I'm what we're going to catch. This. We shall see, <laughs> shall we? Yeah. It always but... makes me wonder as we end the session if we might catch a kraken. <laughs> <laughs> really what was not going there until the very last moment um yeah so just as we're wrapping up just as a bit that the last thing he will provide you with anything he can help with but he wants the body of one of those types of beings that you saw on the ship so and like the weird does, tentacly ones so, and was, was yes the no 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 the, um, the, the one the doing the ritual with the octopus on his head yeah. Okay. Got it. The one that was doing a vision impression. Um, and he, yeah, and he does seem very confident that the Chandler family would have a connection to something. He does mm -hmm. not give many more details as he starts very rapidly going through all these books that have just been decoded. And he also says he wants the obelisk. Right. 
from prime water and he says that with this he thinks he can uncover <laughs> some of the deeper secrets of what's going on and exactly what the threat is to salt marsh so with that though we will end tonight and we will keep